Okay, give me a second, guys. No. Not yet. my videos there we go there's that five likes three watching hello everyone hi guys welcome to the stream give me a second so i can find out who's in here hey east devon hey. Hey, Ellen! Hey, Ellen! Hello, Shauna! Hello, Shauna! Hey, it's Pammy! Hi, Pammy! Hey, Vanessa! Hey, Vanessa! Welcome, guys! Thanks for coming in! Can y'all re-gift our video? She will be here momentarily. Re-gift, re-gift, re -gift. And that's good for everybody. Yes. Because we all get lots and lots of feeling. Huh? <laughs> What's that? This is login status stuff. I don't know what I did that for. I just moved my thumb around the screen. Wow. Ace Burgers is being weird. What? I can hear Dad and I can watch his live stream right here in his room. <laughs> Evan oh. says, yo, Ace Burger, a.k.a. Son of a Braxist. <laughs> hey, dead. A.k.a. Dumbass. Oh. <laughs> Son of a Braxist. 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 Son of a I just told her I am live whenever she's ready. Awesome. <sighs> <laughs> Vanessa told Ace Burgers to listen to your mama. <laughs> He's out of the room now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Okay. Da, both, da. both the kids think they have to be the center of retention when we're live streaming. What the heck? What? What'd you do? That's scary. What? What? Cherry said she'll be with us in five minutes. What's scary? The picture I just seen. Somebody laying naked with pizza over their certain parts of their body. Hi, baby girl. Hi, baby girl. Go make your appearance. Go make your appearance, stupid. I need to see this aware. Go make your appearance. Go make your appearance. Okay, I'm just trying to find her Sherry's email and messages. Go make your appearance. Go make your appearance. Where's your where's your phone? Where's your toys? Where's the toys? Uh, Vanessa told you to listen to your mama. Mm, I heard, I saw. Ah! <laughs> I got my puppy. Mine. Mine. Ah. So she, she's on your bed. Don't you kill my leg like she's She's playing me. I there we go. Playing. Hey, Fallen! Hey, Fallen, how you doing? Hey, I can still see you. Uh, I can see you. I see dead people. No, no, no. I see dead people. <laughs> I see dead people. Hey, Wonder Pop! Hey, Eagle Eye! 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 Hey, Eagle Eye!
Hey guys, welcome Hey Sherry. Hey Sherry, hey Wonder Pop. Hey Eli. Hey Irish whiskey. Hey Irish. Hey sunshine. Hey sunshine. Or how she puts it, clean sunshine. Clean sunshine. I bow down to you, my dear. How <laughs> to be good at life? Don't suck. Shut the door. It might sense. Shut the door, please. With you on the outside. Turn the kitchen light off. Please. Hey, Shore Fry. Hey, Shore Fry. Welcome, honey, to the family. Can you re-gift, guys, and like Stop. the video? <coughs> yes, please re-gift. Re gift and like. Like, if you guys are not yet subscribed, whoops, if you guys are not yet part of our family, please do that. You're, you're going to get best over the head. By who, you or me. YouTube or both? Both. Uh -huh. I come bring puppy of destruction. The demon dog. There's, our, <laughs> there's what everybody wants to see. They didn't come here to see your balding head, Dad. They came here to see the puppy puppies. The demon puppies. The demon puppies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, Vegas. Hey, Vegas. Hey, bro. You know what's funny? She I do this with her ears like Dizzy used to. No, sure, Fry wasn't talking to you. She said hi to Wonder Pup. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, She's like, are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? Thank you, Eagle Eye. She's our, the fifth member of our team. Four. Dizzy was the sixth. Fifth. No, she's oh, the fifth, sixth, yeah. technically. Go. Dizzy's still with yeah. us. Well, Dizzy, Dizzy's out. not. Go out Dizzy with her. Out. Dizzy's here spiritually. She was not too old. She was too old, but not take Dizzy out. Now we got a little. Earth's mic. calling Chris. Yeah, she's not oh, much. She's I said it to you. He's a butt. Puppy butt. Ah, nice. Puppy butt. Let's do it again. She's a butt butt. There you go again. I posted the invite. If I have to, I'll go ahead and post the invite mm. link in the thing again. Do you realize that she chews on that? Do you realize that she's telling that before? Do you know she had to shut Do you know your butt? mom wiped your butt with that? <laughs> Why would I care? She wiped my butt with it. Go turn the kitchen light off, off and get out, yeah. please. Ah, uh, okay. I'll send you the link to uh, Facebook. Oh, don't tell me you can't do the do the re recap. Yeah, we are. It was very, very, very interesting, guys. There you go. I sent the link to your Facebook Messenger, girl. I went and just put your email in, tried to add you that way. I guess it's not going to love me. Hey, Lady C. Hey, lady. Hey, lady. How are you today, honey? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Hey, Shadow Demon. Hey, Shadow. Welcome. Hey, Shadow. Hey, Shadow. Does the grenade work? No. Find the door. Thing. Austin. <laughs> this Austin. Is, this oh. is an apartment. Can you please? Hey, guys. Hey, Sherry. Hi. Hey, Sherry. Take her out. Come on, baby. One. Hello, dead paranormal. Hello, guys. Hello to everyone. Bye, peoples. Okay. Before we actually get into that, is there anything you want to say about that night? Who, me? Yes, you. 
It was a very interesting night, a very intense night. I would say that very much so. Um, a lot of different energies and stuff was picked up, good and negative. Um, there ain't really a lot we can say until really we go into the detail. It's your show. You tell them all the stuff that went on and I'll read out the stuff I got. Right. And it was a very intense, a very intense night and a, a night that he said was one of his scariest nights because he's not normally had that sort of thing. He's normally okay when he goes to a place. He said that it was like to him one of the ones that he'll remember. Yeah. That night was so intense, guys. It was. It was unbelievable. I have never had as much energy drained from my body than what I had that night. I was the same. I was the same, like, literally. I, the day after the, the reconcussions of us doing that, like, I was tired, my body was aching, I felt very peculiar. I just didn't feel that I was in our moment at that time. I felt I was quite far away, which was really weird. It took me... I, like, when I do any sort of um, channeling or picking up on anything, I do always get um, tired anyway. But this was just different. Like, I, like everything was just completely zapped out of me, which, you know, I, like I said, I get tired when I do it anyway, but this was just different different and even during right. puppies so yeah she was down for like a day and a half a few days um after that she what she weren't eating properly and things they were saying and right. she, she'd definitely been affected by it very badly yeah and she was lumping around and uh sunshine i will have another day for another open panel and you're more than welcome to come up on that one this is we're reviewing the information or basically a review for the investigation we did last Tuesday. It was so bad Tuesday, Wednesday I went in and my manager ended up asking me if I actually slept. I was so pale. Yeah, I remember you saying that. So, I guess we got, uh, let's see, we actually have 12 people in here watching right now. We still have got 12 people. Forget yes. Forget the video, guys, and like it, please. It's, it's so important to get more people in here than all of us can grow as one, you know, one big happy family. Yep. Uh... With the, how about we just not wait anymore on this? Uh, and people get right in. into it. I'll go ahead and start. Uh, right when we started, I was on my way there, and as soon as I got to the road that I had to go down, I start getting a really heavy feeling on my chest. Actually, it was right before I got to the road. Halfway up the block, I started getting a real heavy feeling on my chest. They knew I was coming. And they knew I wasn't going to be playing any games. <coughs> uh, they were very much with it. There was a lot of them that were quite intelligent. They knew what was going on. Yep. And stuff. And then there was a few of them that were confused and didn't really understand what was going on with them. Some of them I don't even think realized they were even even dead. Well, right. I, had, I had mentioned it to them that they're no longer here, but we'll, we'll help you, help you, you know, as much as we can. Uh, when I got there, we were trying to record as much as we can. We were having technical difficulties with the camera. It shut off numerous different times. Yeah, Even when we were doing the live the and that, it kept so glitching and cutting out. It was locked as well. Okay, Eagle Eye. Wow. wow. But, yeah, we, in the videos from recording it and what a lot of people have said in comments, 
Yes. That there's been orbs. I could even see it in the video while recording. There was orbs everywhere that night. Yeah, well, well, I've not looked at the videos or anything yet. I've not been on your channel to do that yet because I want right. to get as much of the evidence of what's gone there before I do it. Obviously, I have no clue of where their town is or where they live. I have no idea on anything to do with any of the buildings or anything that they've um, been around. I surely just picked up on what I was getting in the moment. Obviously, the first time, I only got a few minutes where this time it was just one specific building. And we stayed there for a, a, a reasonable amount of time. So we was able to get quite a lot from it. Yeah. The part Before she even joined us, I was already in the live stream for the video that whole time. So that was about a nice, good 20 minutes. And then we were there until like almost I'm very good. Thank you. a half hour to 45 minutes after that. Well, the did did we catch the part where I told you that there was something behind me? In Vegas. I can't remember. I don't know. Sean well, and Marie Penny. I, I don't know if, if it was on video or not, but yeah. I said there was something behind me and Sherry Sherry said there was, but I didn't know what it was. And all of a sudden I just started getting emotional and crying, you know, tearing up. I think my my voice changed, you know, throughout the video, but but I was I was really shaken up about it, you know. I those, uh, I cannot get those kids out of my mind. Right. Okay, we're going to go ahead and turn it over to Sherry so she can start with the first page of notes that she took. Do you want me to just go over? What I got that night, or do you just want me to go from the first time and then go into the next bit? That's up to you. Any way you want to do it. Just in case there's anybody that's come in the room that hasn't hasn't followed it and doesn't know what's happened, I think it'd be better to do it that way. That's fine. Okay, guys. The note says she's going to be reading that she took. It's going to be over two different days. The first time was only, she was only, we were only there with her for like five, six minutes. Hey, yeah. purple, purple. We was on the video for more than five or six minutes. We was on there for about an hour, but we only got a couple of minutes per per place. And obviously then walking up there and going back as well. So right. we didn't get much time. So that was on the 14th of April which is where we went round the area that Chris and his partner lives. What is your partner's name? You've never said your partner's name. Missy or Melissa. Missy. Melissa, okay. So Chris and Melissa obviously um, went on to... Um, Melissa was... I think Melissa was at home, wasn't she? It was just yeah. you and your son. I was, I was walking home from work at the time. And they'd video called me on Messenger. And they were walking around the area that they live and we were going past different buildings and as we were going past different buildings Chris would say is there anything that you pick up on this area or I would tell him to stop and I was picking up on places like a brothel I said that I could see ladies that lived there on that um, property they would use their rooms that they rented to also do things with their customers I felt that there was a lot of drug abuse and um, murder for deaths there. I I could see a lot of ladies flirting with the women, uh, with the other men. Um, there was music, there was laughter, but I did feel there was a lot of unnegative feelings in there as well, because of these like these murders and um, drug based things that they would have done. Obviously, like I said in the last stream, that when you go into that business, some of us do turn to drugs and things like that to try and get over what, you know, what we've got to do because obviously there would have been women there that had families and they were trying to make the money to um, 
to feed them and their kids. <coughs> we could later on pick up that we felt that a lady called Elizabeth, which I got the name Liz from, was um, a lady that was connected to this building, but we feel that she had done something a little bit more severely in her life, which you'll come to understand in a minute, but it's to do with her kids and stuff. So I'm going to go on to the, the next stage, which is a store. We were going past this area and I said to Chris to stop and he stopped. I said, was there, is this a place where they would have held things or like sold things? And he said, yeah, it used to be a store. And everything. I said, oh, it's funny that you say that because that's what I'm seeing. But I'm seeing a man that owned it. And he would entice children into his into his shop because he had sweets and stuff like that. And he would take these children down to the basement in his building where he would sexually abuse these children. Some of them lived around the area that his shop was and that obviously homes were. And there were other children that he would go and get as well, which would be through him going out of town in his car, which I could see was a, it's like an old sort of fashioned Ford looking car, red, uh, not red, green. It was green with black leather roof. And it was just quite a big um, vehicle. And what he would do, is he would go out of town, he would go and get things for his store, which he would store in his other part, of, on the other side of the road, which I'll come to say to you about that as well in a minute. And while he was out getting his stuff, he would pick up children from other cities. Those children that he brought back to his basement and done the same thing, sexual abuse and that, he would kill some of the children he released, but some of, most of them he murdered. At the time we were picking up on, they were saying it was either 30 to 40 um, victims that had supposedly had this done to them, but I was picking up on a lot more. I said, I don't feel, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't feel that it was in the 30s to 40s. I feel it was in the 80s or more. And what this guy would do, if I go on to the second bit, there was another holding place where he would put all of his stuff from his shop. <coughs> he would put all of his shop stuff in there, but he would also store the children's bodies in that place so it wasn't in the shop so that people weren't aware of where they are. And he would cover his tracks on what he's done. And when it got to the evening, when it's dark, he would take these children's bodies and take them to the woods and the green area, which I picked up on also on, on this um, investigation. And he would bury them blind because it was dark. He would not see where he was burying these children and stuff. So he, he'd buried quite a few children. Some of them wouldn't have been known to have gone that way because of how far out they were and where he picked them up from. So some people weren't even aware that these children were victims to him. But there are ones that did um, become aware of being victims to him. And to me, he was a sex offender and a serial killer of children. That's what he does. And that's what he used to go around doing. I, ch I picked up on the church. And I said to um, Chris... Has the church had anything evil done around it, like rituals or um, sacrifices and stuff? I said, like, was there any weird holes and spots where burn would have been? And he said, I wouldn't know about that. I did feel that maybe the building was still in use, but I wasn't sure. But then Chris finalised that it was. I said, there is still stuff that goes on around that building to this very day to do with dark magic and stuff and um, dark witch magic and stuff like that. So... That was the church, and I just felt that the people in the church weren't very nice as well, and they used to do things to the people that used to follow the church. I've told you about the store holding place, which is where he used to store the um, the killer and paedophile used to store the children's bodies before he buried them. I'd picked up on a train, a steam, a steam train, but I felt that it may have been some sort of train that took goods and took people. I'd felt that there'd been an explosion where 
50 lives were lost. Um, I got the feeling that they weren't people from around here. They were people that people had paid to get through employees um, or they may have been people that shouldn't have been in that side of the country coming in to do work. I felt that they weren't linked to anywhere around um, Chris's area and that it was an unfamiliar place that they were travelling from. We did come to find that it may be insurance related and stuff like that. There may have been some freak um, accident or it would have been uh, something done to, to make money. So this explosion I felt was either from the inside the tra train near the engine or there was something on the train that caused the train to blow up. There was, in my opinion, and from what I could see, no survivors of the, uh, the steam train accident. Then we went on to where we were, where we first walked. We come past, and he asked, and um, Chris asked if I'd picked up on anything. And I said that I could see military men, soldiers, and I could see some sort of battle going on. I could see men and people running back and forth, shouting, saying, "Get out! Get out! Get out! Run! 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 Run!" And all this, th these weird bang noises, and I could hear this high-pitched siren noise well which was going it's like a warning sort of thing it was really weird and i could hear those things going on and i could see men in other uniforms but i couldn't make the other uniforms out and that's when chris had said that he also knew that that used to be a sheriff um department so it would kind of make relevant to why like you know police officer sort of men and you know military men would be together but there was this this by I um fight I felt that there was civilians that may have been caught in this because I've seen a lot of children about as well. There was lots and lots of children, so that was the military base. But like I said, it, it was more we could hear and feel so much there as well. Like we we got a lot of emotions from there, a lot of anger, a lot of upset. Some of the guys like Chris and his son and that was feeling um, weird things when he, they were walking in them areas. So. That was a really active area for me. Then we, we were walking down the road and I suddenly picked up on racism. And I said, I feel that there is this, this group in white with masks. I'd say the KKK, it looks like. They would go round after mixed race people and they would murder them and kill them. And <clears throat> um, some of them would have been stabbed from behind the back and made to kneel down before they'd done that. There there was children and adults that this happened to. And then it was very strange because then Chris had said that there was a young boy that was mixed race that was um, thrown out of the top of a window by a noose and was hanged because of racism and stuff. And I picked up on the KK and that there was a lot of very unloyal and nasty um, stuff done to these mixed race people. It wasn't nice to see. I then picked up on a hospital. I picked up that sick people used to live there. But I also then started to pick up more on mentally ill people. And I felt that they had these, um, these shockwave therapies and other experiments done on them. And when you see some of the people in spirit form they seemed that they weren't with it very zombified and um like their brain had been frazzled from the experiments and stuff they were very upset very confused very angry um lost wanting help um i felt that there was abuse and murder within the hospital as well um um, they definitely was not treated right and I feel that in their spirit form they're now trapped in this building and they're wanting help and they are living what they went through every day they're le like living in a past life they're replaying that situation over and over again then I picked up on murders of witches I could see men and women that were witches being hanged, being put on a wooden chair or some sort of chair and being tied down and then they would be dunked into water 
and pulled back out, dunked him into water until they drowned. This was apparently a way that they would see if they were River Witch or not. There was also, like I said, there was burning. They'd been burned. They'd, like I said, they'd been dunked in the water. There was another another thing they used to do where they used to hold them in the water, then put them up, and obviously they were drowned from the water and stuff like that. And while was being in that area, I could feel the very strong power and energy of the witches around that area. Obviously, me being a witch as well, I could feel it really badly. And that affected me in quite a negative way. It made me feel quite upset. Um, they were very emotional, very angry, very upset. Um, they don't like how they were treated when all they needed <coughs> to do was help is what they would say. And um, obviously, they've got very powerful energies because of what they are. And... At the same time, I could feel a bit of happiness from them as well because the, in this era, it's more accepted being a witch and being different. And that makes them happy because what they are and who they are is carried on in this life. But the majority of them do want help and are very angry over the way that they were treated. So that night was, a, again, it was an intense night, but nothing like the second night. But you, we felt a lot of different energies, mixed energies. We, 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 could, we could feel that the, the serial killer slash um, paedophile, the guy that was murdering these children, he um quite prominent to a lot of the locations. He would walk around quite regularly. And I feel this was because he was keeping an eye on the children because he's got the children trapped, which is where we picked up on a hole. I'd seen this hole and I said, I can feel that he would be down there and I feel the children and that and Chris had come out and said it's funny you say that because when I've done an investigation in the past we see some eyes coming from that area and we felt that it may be um, this guy and this guy might be linked to children but they weren't sure because they didn't know about that at the time until I'd come out of it and this is what they were discussing with me the other day but they'd said to me when you were there and you'd picked up on that he was down there and he was holding the children. He goes, we got like EVPs and stuff. There was EVPs where they were called the N word as well. There was a lot of stuff that they'd picked up in their investigations that would finalize and linking very well to what I was picking up. And again, like I will state to you guys, I don't know where they live. I do not know the areas that they are in. I have only sheerly picked up on what I have got from them buildings and from the spirits. So, we will now go on to yeah. the 17th, which is what we're here today about, which is where I was going around one particular building, and it was to do with um, the area of where the, the serial killer and the paedophile was linked. We was getting a lot of energy from children. The, the children were taking interest in the ball that Chris's son had left them as a, as a gift. And that was put down into the hole before they left so that they had the ball. But while I was there, I was picking up on a, a little girl of eight years old called Molly Lane. Molly Lane was eight years old and she was around in the 1956. She was in a red dress with dark hair and she was either strangled and burnt and I could feel a rope. I'd also picked up that I couldn't get the name straight away, but then I got the name Bill or Billy and Killer and 47, his age. He had been murdering for over 15 years or more. I then was getting that she was, Molly, was buried near trees and water to the southwest of the woods. I was also seeing when we were standing at the build, build and I see a door where they were coming in and out like this this man was coming in and out with these bodies and these children and um, I could tell that that was linked to the murders and the stuff that he was doing to them and stuff and I'd said this to Chris as well. I'd sensed that there was three children near the ball, two of them being male and one being a female. The male that was holding these children, the killer of the children, do not like um, the living communicating with the children and he does whatever he can 
to make sure that people can't communicate with with these children so it'll make you feel unwell or feel orientated um he will just do things to make you not feel very good and make you want to move from that area and we was picking that up quite a lot at the investigation especially chris chris in the end said that he was going to stop the stream he was going to stop the the video and that we were doing and that he was going to go home because he was feeling funny and he did he wasn't feeling too good about it and everyone was getting a bit on edge um I, i'd also picked up on a young male of um six he fell down steps i was seeing i was seeing the, the killer and him trying to run from the killer and he tripped down the stairs i felt that his name was samuel smith he was born around 1961 he was picked up classed as missing so this was a child that was out of the town i felt that he had a broken neck and i would i felt that he was buried to the south of the woods we got the old green fashioned ford black leather roof type car killer drove that was his car i felt that different sort of killings like stabs to the groin to the neck to the back and the guys were feeling same feelings and pains to chest right side and over parts of their body which would um symbolize um the facts of um these children being murdered, different things being done to them. Um, the, the stab to the chest is relevant to someone I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, while being there, we could hear a lot of growling. We could hear whining noises. We could hear whispers, whispering, uh, whispers from female voices, emotional voice, which I was picking up around Chris's wife. And then she said about, that she'd been feeling emotional and she wasn't feeling very happy. There was pains to the arms and shoulders. There was pains to the ribs. I'd wrote down about um, tasting a metallic um, taste and smelling this, this funny smell. And then it was very weird because I just wrote that down onto the paper. I hadn't said it. I just wrote it. And then Chris had come out with... I've got this horrible sulfur taste in my mouth. It's horrible. It's burning the back of my throat. And I was like, it's funny you said that because I've just wrote out about a metallic taste to the mouth. So I do feel that um, maybe some of the, um, the, the victims that were in the war might have got some sort of poisoning from bullet wounds and that might have killed them. They're just getting this horrible taste. Uh, we also picked up on a 12-year-old girl, but we couldn't get her name. She was blonde, long hair. She had a long dress, yellow. I felt that you would get headaches and you'd feel like you're being suffocated when you was around this girl because I felt that her death was caused through suffocation. She was around in the 1958. Again, another victim to this serial killer and this uh, paedophile guys we then got a little girl called lizzie who was four she was out from out of town so she would have been classed as missing but they wouldn't have known she was here she was wearing a green dress with a white cardigan north of the woods is where she was buried not listed to be missing from because she's not from the town she had red hair she had this heart necklace and i'd say she was from around the 1950s to the 1952 i would said to you about this, the ball being left with the um, spirits and being put down in a hole, so I don't need to go over that again. I did feel that there was a lot of anger and upset. Um, um, one of the guys had um, experienced a sort of a, a hit or some sort of bad pain to their right leg. And it was funny because then the dog yelped later like something had been done to her leg, so it was really weird. <laughs> there was, as we were leaving the, the area to go, um, there was a figure seen, possibly, 
that was watching Chris and the guys leave. And when we were leaving, I kept saying I could feel a very neg negative energy around them. So they were doing prayer and stuff to make sure that the, this spirit would go and stuff. But there was a lot of negative energy we were feeling. And when we were leaving, we could feel like there were spirits watching and stuff like that. There is this lady called Lizzie, known as Elizabeth, was a mother of two two children that were victims to this uh, paedophile and this serial killer. She came to pick up that this had happened and she'd been watching his activity and what he'd been doing. And she'd made a plan with other people that they would lure him over to this brothel place, which is where she worked. She used to work there to try and... Um, provide for her and her children so she lured this man into the um the brothel and she made it look like she was going to do him sexual favors and he was going to pay her and she actually stabbed the killer and killed him and she'd done that by enticing him into the room and that was their plan but then this poor lady after that become grieved and upset over the fact that she knew what had happened to her children and over the fact that she'd gone and killed a person when that isn't the sort of person she was. But the, the pain and the upset got to her too much. She missed her babies too much. And knowing she'd killed someone, even though she felt that was the right thing to do. And in my opinion, it was because if I was in that situation and I'd found out that my kids had been killed by someone, I'd do exactly the same thing. I'm sorry, but you would do anything for your children. But she just, she felt so much grief and upset through what she'd had to do that she ended up committing suicide and killing herself. Yeah, there was a lot that we took in that night. Uh, I like to thank Irish Whiskey, Fruity Loops, Entity Paranormal, uh, Vanessa for showing up. Uh, TXGT, thank you for coming back. Thank you. Thank you there were a lot. There was a lot. There was a lot of energies, weren't there, Chris? But there was a lot of them that they weren't letting on to us who they were. They were very unsure, and you know, I think the more that they go back there, and the more we get there with them, they become more open to us and maybe talk a bit more. But, you know, these are the things that I picked up. And, you know, I think the guys are going to be doing some research. And like I said, I'm not going to go and do anything here because I don't want to find anything else out about that place. So I want to be able to pick up sheerly on what I pick up in my mind and right. then what they give me. That is who I am. I don't like doing research and stuff like that. Only on how to get there. That is it. But obviously, like I said with Chris, I don't know his place. I don't know where he lives. I don't know anything about the places that he took me to. And this was just surely what I'd picked up from the spirits and from feeling things when being on the investigations. Very intense night. Definitely a night I definitely won't forget. Um, very emotional, very sad. At the same time, very happy because the children become happy getting a present. But we still felt so much pain and upset there because we don't want to leave those kids there like that. So... Chris is planning on going back to help cross some of these little darlings over to the other side because that's what they're wanting. And I said that I'd be present with him on video if he wants me to, to, to be there, just as some support, you know, and I could be the mentor because they'll need a bit of counselling, a bit of talking to you. I know how to do that because I do that all the time. So I can be there with you if you want, Chris. But our main aim is to get these poor children away from this this killer. This uh, paedophile. Uh, this. Sorry to interrupt you, Cherry. Yes, darling. East Devon Paranormal said, just heard a man's voice shouting at you or at PWI's place, sounded American. Uh, another thing that I noticed in the chat one of the greatest investigators just passed away at 92. Oh, my God. Lorraine Warner. Oh. Well, but big love and respect to Lorraine Warner and for all of your amazing work and the amazing person that you was. Yeah, and, and I hope that you're at peace, my darling, and that the Lord and Divine's with you and we, we give you the light. Go to the light. 
love and, and respect you. For a lot of the people in chat don't know who Lorraine Warner is. She, her and her husband, Ed, is... It's Warren, Lorraine Warren. So, Lorraine Warren, sorry for your, um, your passing. Is the ones that actually brought you the movies, The Conjuring, The Conjuring 2, The yeah, no, yeah. Kill Horror, uh, Annabelle. They were the investigators that they brought in on these big movie cases. Yeah, no, I, I see them. I see the, like, the real-life ones and that with them in it. And they were a very ma amazing paranormal team. Very, very good husband and wife trio and um, couple, sorry. And absolutely amazing at their work. And they, they brought so much evidence about the paranormal. Yes. You know, and so, I, a lot of love to her. On top of it, she actually teached it in college. She did, yeah, she did. Yeah, I I used to watch about her quite a lot. I used to follow them. I, that's like two of the people that I got to know quite well that got me into my paranormal as well, like made me to understand a bit more just watching their bits. And, you know, she went through a lot of stuff being who she was because she was also um spiritual as well. She could pick up on things. So... Uh. A lot of love and respect to her and RIP to you and may the Lord and Divine be with your soul. He said he also seen him drowning kids in the lake too. But there was actually... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I did see that... Um, it. I think it was Molly that... Yeah, I see that Molly was either near trees or water. So yeah, there is a possibility. Like I said, I hadn't picked up on every child that, was going, that had been attacked there. So there is... It is very strong possibility that some of them probably were drowned or they were killed and then put in the water. So, very, very likely. There is a question actually also from It's Me, Pammy. She okay. said, Sherry, when you get drained, how long does it last? And anything it with, with it faster to probably get your energy back quicker. It depends. It depends on what sort of spirits and energies I'm going into contact with. If there's a place that I go to where um, there's quite a lot of energy, that will intend to drain you quite quickly. Um, um, demonic, um, negative energies can drain you really quickly. Like I said, any spirit can drain you, but it depends on the extent of what they are to how, like, you know, how you're going to be affected. I can go anything from having one to two days rest to have needing a couple of weeks. It depends on how many energies I actually pick up on. And the ways that I try to redeem myself, bring myself back from feeling like that will be a lot of relaxation, meditation, um, music, um, lots of salt baths, and just usual things that will heighten my energies and help me to come back to normal. Sherry, I have a question. Yes, darling. Is it possible that we could crush uh, Elizabeth? I got a kids? feeling if we actually, if her kids are one of them that there, as soon nine times out of ten, go, um, she's going to go. Because you can do it where you uh, light the candle, and when you light the candle, you can ask for all the souls to come forward, and then you can call out for Elizabeth and say, Elizabeth, would you like to come forward and be with your children and go to the light? It's a way of inviting her to that light. So it would be a way for her to connect back to her children and to move on. So, yes, she can do that. Okay, because she needs to go. But you, you do need to call her. You can't just do the light and expect her to turn up. You need to call for her. Right. So say, Elizabeth, I know that what happened to your children was awful. We are here to help you and your children. Please come forward so we can send you over with them to the Lord and the Divine. Okay. And she should come because she does want to go. But she just wanted to get that story out, what happened. I feel her. I feel her right now. She's ready to move now. She's ready because she's got to say what she wanted to say. I I feel her. Yeah. I feel her. So do that when you go there and you move the move these spirits. Just say, I call upon all adults and children spirits that want to move forward. I also call upon Elizabeth. Please come forward to your children as they wait for you and come into the light and go to the Lord and divine. 
and then just do what I said to you. Say to them, can you hear the voices? Yeah. Can you see them? Concentrate on them and keep going forward. Do not look back. Just listen to my voice as I guide you and just ask them to keep going into the light. Okay. You'll get that feeling when you know they've crossed over because it'll just become calm and everything lifts. And obviously, we because I can see things, I can see when they've gone gone to the light, so I can see it. But for you guys, it'd be more feeling it, wouldn't it? So you'll be able to feel this this lift. Yeah. Be able to she, feel it. she will. She does need to go. And I know that her children want to go over. Most of the children want to go over. So as long as you call her to be with them, they will go together. The yep. there because a lot of people go well if they're in the same town how comes they haven't bumped into each other it's just like not all of us can see them not all of them can see us and some of them can't see each other so when you're in that that place of loss and and upset and you're you're constantly walking around and you're looking you don't always see the things that are so obvious in front of you in the spirit realm so you know she might hear them or see glimpses but then when getting close to them she can't get to them because there's that that field that's blocking her from being able to do that. So this is why we need the light, so she can go into light and actually be reconnected with them properly. So, right. you know well, what I mean? With all those orbs around, I knew that they were just curious. They were trying to... Yeah. Just trying to understand and trying to see what you're doing. And, you know, that they're, they're people at the end of the day and they're still yeah. children. Children would always have been interested in things you're doing. They would go and look at what you're doing and stuff. You know, it's just them being intrigued. Right. And stuff, you know. And obviously for the adult, you know, a lot of them, they are waiting there. They're like, well, we want you to help us. They know you're there to help them. You know what I mean? And, and that's why you've got to go back and do that. You do need to go back and send them when you've got your next free time. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh... With that night, it's the first night I've been so damn drained. I went into work the next night, and my my general manager looked at me and said, why are you so pale? Didn't you get enough sleep? I said, it's from the investigation. I was so drained. I was not myself. Okay. Then our dog, she was so drained, her... One leg was hurting, so she didn't want to move. I I've never had anything make me feel like I did. Right. I mean, you could you could tell you could hear it in my voice when I was like, "Oh, come and see the puppy," and then the next thing it sounds it like you open yourself to what you're doing, the more you become adapted to what's going on around you. And when you're around people that have abilities and people that can help you to get that energy, that opens you as well. You know yeah. what I mean? So when you're around me, you're going to feel so much more because I've got that energy. I've got those abilities and I'm putting that energy into you guys. So you're going to be feeling so much more as well. You know, it, uh, it's life. It's how it happens. East Devin Paranormal says he didn't act alone. So he had a partner somewhere along the way. And then he said, uh, Elizabeth keeps telling me to tell her story. Everyone needs to hear it. Right. right. But the biggest thing is to let those kids know. I told them, I said, you won't be forgotten. Right. You will not be. You were choking. Yeah. I I could imagine that because there was a lot of where we could feel like something around our throat or we were getting these weird feelings in our throat, like some people were choking or being suffocated and things like that. This could be water related as well. So yep. it was very peculiar. Um, I've I've kind of said what's happened to Elizabeth. I've kind of said it, you know, that obviously there was probably more to her and stuff, but I just think she just wanted to know people to know that her children had been murdered and what she'd done. She wanted to be able to say what she'd done so she can move on because she's stuck in that moment. And Even I know she, right. shouldn't, she shouldn't feel bad or feel horrible for what no. she's done. No. You know, they were her children and any mother would do that, you know, but to her, the good person she was and the lovely person she was, 
she ended her life because she felt guilt. And there's no reason to be guilty. I don't care who you are. I guarantee each and every one of the people in the chat right now. I'm the most loving and spiritual person in the world, but I would kill for my kids. Right. <coughs> exactly. You know what I mean? No. No. No, no doubt. I know I would. Now, um, when we were talking to the lady, she said she saw the corner that we were looking at or that you guys were looking at where the dog was looking up. She saw she saw two eyes. In the video. In the video. Now, but she hasn't talking, seen the video yet. But I was also talking to Deb Paranormal. And he said he saw a monk. And you said that they did something at the church, right? Yeah, I, you think think I felt that there was black magic and like dark stuff being done so around the church. Maybe. And yeah. Quite and possibly. That there were people was inside the church that weren't very nice and used to do things to others that used to visit there. So maybe, maybe that was his partner or something. You know, that possibly could be, that could be related. You know, we never know. You know. I don't know. 15 years old, teenager, help him. Fifteen year old teenager helped him. Yeah. Oh. Oh. That's amazing. It's good when you can yeah. help them and take them to where they need to be, you know. It's really cool to be an investigator and it's really cool to have your abilities, but the most saddest thing is when these guys are trapped and, you know, they, they, you can do something to help them. Right so, you know, any real and passionate investigator would want their spirits to go to the other side. Right. It's their choices if, he, if they want to. You can't make them. But you always have to give them that sort of automatum, you know. You can go. I I think it's gonna take a couple times. I mean, once that's they good. See, I'm glad that she trusts you. Once they see other ones going, you know, then they might change their mind because they might be like stubborn and be like, "I'm not going because I don't know what that holds. I don't, I don't know what it's all about," you know. But. After they see people going into light, like I said, it might take like no ODSD. What's that? Uh, she said ODSD, Shadow Demon. Mm. Uh, yeah, Pammy said he was forced into it. Uh, and her and East Devon Paranormals feeling the same thing. Okay. What's that? About the whole 15 year old. Um, he didn't have a choice. More or less, it sounds like he was either told to, was forced to help him or. You either do it or I'll kill your parents or something. Right. Yeah. Type deal. So you're saying you're feeling that there was a younger person that was involved in the killing of these children and that they were, he was forced to do it? That's what I'm getting out of the chat. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I maybe he was a son. Maybe he was the son of the killer because I do feel the killer would have had children. Maybe he was the son and he had to do what his dad said. Maybe. Okay, guys. After you heard the whole investigation from what she had written down. Do you guys have any questions for either myself or Sherry or my wife? If you do, please put it up in chat and we'll try to or answer them in the order they come in. The only thing I uh, East Devon says that if he, he was made, if he was made to do something that he was did not want to do, all he has to do is when he's sent over is ask for the forgiveness to the Lord. The Lord will know if he meant it or not. Uh, East Devon says the teenager is asking for help. He is truly sorry. 
Yeah, no, that's what I just spoke about. Oh. That's what I'm saying. You need to send him over and the Lord will know if he is true to what he's saying or not. If you did not, like, like when you do him, you just say to the to the 15-year-old that had to take part in the murders, if you did not mean to kill these children and you were forced, then you need to ask for the forgiveness from the Lord. Yeah, he will do that if he's compassionate to what he's done. You know what I mean? Right. Right. So, yeah, you know, you've got to help him like you help the others. You treat him no different. You just say, you, you know, if you're sorry for what you've done and you did, you was forced, then ask for the forgiveness of the Lord, for the Lord will forgive you. That's all you've got to say. And the Lord yeah. will do. You know what I mean? He's a 15-year-old child at the end of the day. He doesn't know really what he's doing. Okay, he's old enough to understand what killing is. But if his dad was abusive and sexually abused him and done nasty things to him, he's not going to go against what his dad right. is telling yeah. him to do, is he? He's going to do it. So, yeah. Right. And the Lord knows everything. So does the divine. Yes. So, no punishment will go unheard. If he's done this to his child and his child's had to do that, that man is most certainly going to hell. He is anyway, because of what he's done to those children and that. Right. Okay, Wonder Pup. Uh, he said he was told, you do this or your brother and sister is next. So more and less he was doing it to protect... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I did feel that the killer had children. I do feel the killer's yep. had children. So he was the eldest from what I'm feeling. So he done whatever he did to make sure that those children, his brother and sister, didn't go through the same yep. thing. And I, I feel that when these innocent little lives were taken, that he would sit in his room and he would cry and he would do things to himself because he'd done it. And... That's not a nice way to have to live, knowing that it wasn't down to you why you had to do what you do. So he will be washed of any sin, any pain, and he will be treated no different to any of the other good ones. Yes, he did help to kill these lives, but he was being abused himself. Yeah. You know, so... Just say I'm that right. you're aware of him being there and that you can help him. We understand your story. We can hear what you're saying. If you ask for the Lord's forgiveness and you say that you didn't mean it, the Lord will help you and take away your pain and all that you feel. And then the Lord will do the rest. All you've got to say to him then is, I want you to go to the light. I want you to go to the Lord and the divine so that he can help, they can help you. I want you to concentrate on the light. And if you can hear their voice calling you, go towards the voice. Go towards the light. Keep going. Don't look back. And just right. keep talking him through the light. Just walk through the light. Keep walking. Can you hear them? Yes. You'll hear a response. Like you'll get a sudden yes in your head or you'll get this feeling that, you know, that they're, they're, they're communicating. And then you just go, okay, yes, you're doing the right thing. Keep going towards that light. Going to that light means that you will be in no pain. You will not have to suffer all of the stuff you've suffered being on this earth, earth, being bound. Go to the light. Go back to where it's good and where it's nice. And he should go over. And there will be people waiting for him. Yeah. Let's <coughs> <coughs> just do a long round set. Do some sage, do some prayers as well with it. Just do some prayers before you send him and do some prayers after. It just gives that, that love, that light into that situation and it helps you and it helps them to feel more at ease with what's going on. Okay. Well, I, I want you on the phone to help us do it. Cause yeah. I, I'll be with you. I'll be with you, sweetheart. But obviously, East, Eve, East Devon Paranormal is saying, how can I send this 15-year-old spirit over because he's talking to him, um, them. So I've just told them yeah. what to do for him. Okay. That's good. That's one less I got to try to 
I wasn't feeling that there was a woman a present around the, the, the killer, no. But I did feel that there was children. Yeah. And stuff. Um, okay, thank you, darling. I'll look at that after just to have a look. So there were some explosions then. That's interesting. Yeah, from what I picked up, they're in West Virginia, though. It does, like, like I said to you that time, it doesn't have to be necessarily about it. It could yeah. be any of those areas. There could have been an accident there, but there's another accident as well. It can be a number of things. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I've seen the accident happening in that area. It doesn't mean it happened in that area. It's just where it's showing me. So it could be in another part of Virginia or... Oh, see. You know. We have talked to him before. Oh. His name's came across before. Oh. Why? His name's called Donnie. Right, well, now that you've got his name and that, yeah, use his name in that. Just say, Donnie, I'll call you forward to send you over to the light, to the Lord and the divine. You don't have to be here anymore and be in pain or be upset. You don't need to be in confusion. You can be released. You can go to the love and the light. You can be with the rightful creators of us. And then just say, I want you to focus on the light that you see, which is by lighting a candle, and ask him to walk in that light. Yeah, you won't be able to get all of them because you wouldn't necessarily have to be on with Chris to do that because a lot of them are in buildings. But you will probably yeah. see some of them going over with him because there will be some children with him. Yeah. So the children that you are seeing going over with him, pray for them as well. Just say, I pray for you all that you go into the love and the light of the, the light. Keep walking, listen to the voices calling you. And, and help them to go over. But there are many, many children still waiting to go over that are trapped in that building. Yeah. Uh, that come out when Chris is about. So. Uh, that name, Sherry, the very yeah, first God. investigation I did there. Yeah. We actually got the name coming over the. Okay, so box. he's been trying to communicate with you for a while then. Right, okay, well, we've yeah, got a name now, I just, and she's I, saying that she's, they're saying that they're letting them go, and there's other children with him, and they're going into the light with him, so that's good, so some of the children are going over with him, but there is still a lot of children that we do need to help do the same thing, but make sure that when you do that, that you do prayer before and after, and that you, you do sage and stuff after, just to protect yourself. Yeah. I, I know Elizabeth is with me, but try to ask Elizabeth to go over. Maybe her kids will go with her because they're still. Them. You're going to probably be trapped in that building. They're in the building. You need to go to the building to do that. Yeah. So what you need to do is when you go yeah. there, I'm not being funny. Elizabeth is going to know who you are now because she's been communicating with us. She'll come forward, and you know I'll know if she's there because I'll see her. So I'll just say, Elizabeth, I know that you're there. Don't worry, we're, we're trying to help your children to come to you so you can go over. So we'll do that, but we need to be in that place. We need candles and stuff, and we do need to do the prayers and stuff as well. So for it to be done properly. So that's why I'm saying to you, East Devon, make sure you do your um, you do your prayers. The nasty man won't let Then you need to pray. The teenager go. You need to do the Lord's Prayer and stuff and ask, ask for the positive to be put over the negative and that no negative energies can consume the good energies and just keep praying till you can feel that negative energy leaving and not there no more and then just do the prayer and do the crossover as quick as you can yep he's going to fight back at you because he doesn't want you to be sending the kids over he wants control of them you Bye. are the light the love the goodness you overpower any evil you can get rid of him. Each kid he keeps is as strong as he's going to get. Every kid he yeah, loses, for every soul he that he's loses. holding, he becomes more powerful. So he's you need his to power. do the prayer to break down his strength and his power. And then you need to do the prayer to help the boy and the children go over. Yep. That you're seeing. And, and tell him that he has no power over them. Exactly. When you're doing it, when you're doing it, and you're you're, you're um, 
asking him to go, make sure you do say, you have no power over these children. You have no hold over these children. These children do not belong to you. These children belong to the Lord. These children belong to the divine. You will not hold them. You will not hold them against their will. They will move and cross over and you will leave them and leave their energies and you will let them cross to the light where they belong. Yeah. I know, I'm, I'm getting really emotional right now. You do not have any power over these children. If you can hear me, the negative spirit, Bill, Billy, you are not in consume of these children. You do not own these children. You do not own your son. For your son is against you for all that you've done. You leave these children in peace and in love for they are going to the light. In the power of our love, our own mighty love, our Lord Jesus Christ, and in the mighty love of our divine, you are not with these children. You are not welcome. You are not invited. Be gone. I'm feeling it again, guys. Hang on a minute. Let me see if I can help him. Hang on. Yeah, I'll be fine, guys. I can just feel him getting angered. And, and I think it's funny. I'm beyond her. So. This shit wants to go so bad. Our Lord, surround me and guide me. Help me release the good spirits. Show your light so bright and help this good spirit to walk towards your... <coughs> Show them the path of peace and safety. Be at no harm or trapped. No more. Lord, help them to cross to you and to have no fear. Just the peace and love of the God of all alive and dead. Show them the light, Lord. Say as much as you can. Embrace their souls and their spirits. Help their, your children to come forth to you. Spirits, if you hear me, please listen to my voice. East Devon, I need you to um, tell me if you've got a candle lit. Concentrate on the light. Concentrate on keep walking. I call upon Jesus Christ, the Lord, our Mother Earth and Mother Nature, be with your children. Bring them to the light and bring them to the justice. Bring them to where there's no pain and fear. Help them and hold their souls as your children and be in the light of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the light of our Mother Earth and Mother Nature. I now do a prayer. Our Heavenly Father above, I ask that you stand with the spirits and release them from the living world to the heavenly spirit world. Our Lord, guide them and release them from temptation. Help them, Lord, protect them, love them, help them to be at peace again. Amen. You okay, Chris? <laughs> you okay, Chris? Yeah. I just had a sharp pain over my right eye. Yeah, I'm just going to do a short call. version because I'm feeling something oh, at the minute. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in the day of our battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and the sneers of the devil. May God rebirth him. We most humbly pray. O oh, do thou, O oh, Prince of Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all other evil spirits, that prowl through the world seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Yeah, it basically angered that guy. And because I'm the one that started a lot of this there, and bringing you along and them along for the live streams, he's taking it out on me. 
Which right? So what you matter. need to do is do your prayers and stuff. He cannot do nothing to you, Chris. He's not as I know. He's just trying to make you think he can. He's not power powerful. You're cowardless and you're evil and you're nasty. And what you did to those children is unforgiving. And you will show the mercy and you will be shown to the Lord. And then you will be shown to the devil. But that's where you belong. Your soul shall be condemned. Your soul shall stay to the confines of the hell where you belong. I rebuke you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the name of our divine Mother Earth and Mother Nature. I condemn you to hell. I condemn you to where you belong. For your soul is not human. Your soul is not good. Amen. I don't know, Chris. I, I don't feel her. Um, she probably went back to watch over her kids. You don't have a candle, just a light. You need some sort of light form. If you've yes. not got a candle, then just put like a torch light or something. Just something where they can see a light. Right. What I'm saying, when you were praying, it was like yeah. she went back to you know be with her kids or something because for protection. It's fine. I, I don't feel her now. Protecting them because he's playing up. So I do feel that they are together, but they need the help to go over. Maybe she knows that we're trying to help them. No. There is no power more powerful than prayer. Prayer and belief in your soul. If you've got prayer in your soul and your heart, you can do anything. Well, I, I hope you help. guys have enjoyed this. I hope that you've found this interesting. We've gone from talking about it to helping these spirits. It's a, I feel very relieved. I feel very lifted knowing that some of them are getting helped. Yes. I do yes. feel really good. I'm feeling a really happy feeling at the minute. But I, know, I do know there's still a lot that me and Chris need to help go over. Me, Chris, and um, his, his, his missus. So we need to do a lot more yet. Maybe that boy was protecting the kids, and now that the other protector is gone, she went back to, you know, finish protecting the rest of them. Something. <laughs> Amen. Yes. I'm glad we did this. Yeah. Because I wasn't expecting to be able to help someone, you know, or have... You can help. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. You can do a prayer and help those to go over that. Yeah. Here, they can see, they can do these things, you know what I mean? So it's just, like I said, it's just about having the prayer and the belief in your heart. You can do it from anywhere. Right. That's the Lord hears you from anywhere. Right. You're welcome, you know I mean? So. That was amazing. I, I thought the investigation you are very welcome guys it's nice to be able to go into rooms where everything is genuine everything is real and everything is about helping those spirits that yeah. is what it's about it isn't about anything else it's not about fame and us getting bigger we genuinely do care about these souls and what they're going through and they've affected us in a very very deep way especially the children and, you know, we just want right. to do what we can to help them. And we are. We're doing it now, and we're going to continue to do it. The thing that tugged at my heart strings, they were all babies. And all of them were all kids. They are little. They are. A lot of them were very little. Yep. You know, like I said to you, the youngest I picked up on was two years old. That's crazy. Uh, Devin said he has his light lounge light on, and the light is swinging. Yeah, that's because it's a light, sweetheart. So all, well, when they're doing that, it's just them acknowledging that they're seeing the light. If you're saying to them, are you seeing the light, that they're acknowledging they're seeing the light. So, like, because you ain't got candles and stuff, you need to have some sort of light source for them to be able to see, to go forward. It's in the prayers and in the mower. I was kind and emotional. Oh, 
That's interesting you say that because I, I didn't actually give the dates of it. I did say it was around the 18 or the 1900s, I told man said. So that's right. interesting you've said that. What? Oh, Wonder Pup said he looked up train explosions in West Virginia and found main explosion around 1800s to 1943. Oh. Now is that a steam engine? Oh, they're all steam engines. Oh. Back at that time, they were. Oh. They yeah. Have to jiggle the handle. Uh, I'll be right back, guys. So you two can try to entertain them. <laughs> okay. Yep. Don't forget to hit that like and that support button, guys. Show some love. Ten people in the room, welcome. Y'all yeah, need to check each other out, too. Yeah, make sure you check each other out. All of the guys on there are awesome and lovely guys. Please yeah. check each other out, support each other. We are about getting people to grow as well. That, that really touched me. That really just... Uh, uh. You're very welcome, East Devon. The, 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 at the end of the day, like I said to you, the main thing we all want is the best for these children and for the good spirits. Yep. PWI in the house with Alexis <laughs> and all the other lovelies. Uh, Perry said PWI in the house. Uh, it was just as exhausting for this live stream as it almost it is, was but that's day. because we are communicating with them. We are communicating. Yep. We are bringing their stories out, and that is yeah. them showing their residual energy to us that they are there. They're aware of what we're doing. That is what they're doing. Yep. They know that we're here to help. And we've just helped to cross some of them over with um, East Devon, so we're going to be feeling that energy and that drain. Right. I think that Elizabeth knows now that... Youngest two years old, the oldest 14. Is what he's I'm meant to be live tonight. I might not go out tonight. I might do my out night one tomorrow and just do one from my home tonight because because after doing that, I think I'll be a bit. I think it'd be a bit dangerous for me right. to go into a churchyard yeah. after doing that. Right. You know I mean? So I'll just do it from home. I can handle my guys in my house. <laughs> 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 I need to be full whack on it to go to a church and places like right. that because there's so many energies. She's probably gonna have to quit now. Or something <laughs> to I'm gonna be on about eleven, so I don't mind staying on a little bit, <coughs> a bit longer. I might go on a bit later than that, but I am on tonight, guys. But it'd be from my home now, yeah. so yep. we just stay with Abraxas for a little while. <laughs> but yeah, it was yeah. exhausting, but the air has seemed to lift some. It's it, it's it's been exhausting, but it's been uplifting. Yes, as well, uplifting because we've been able to help them, and uplifting because we've been able to say what we got. We're able to tell their stories. We're able to let people see that they you know, and show them that they this, and they're still loved, and they yep. still they're still here for us to help. I don't them. know if you read Pammy's. Comment, she says, tell you not by yourself to go out. Pammy, I am someone that does my investigations on my own. I am not scared to go outside on my own. I just won't go out there tonight after having to help send the kids over. It's drained us talking about their stories and stuff, you know what I mean? So I'm going to stay in my house tonight, but I will be going out tomorrow. And, and I, now I think that Elizabeth knows that we are here to help her, you know. I have a feeling she had a, she felt that. Exactly. And a lot of them think that they can't be heard or seen. And when they do, that, that, that means a lot to them, you know what I mean? She knows that there's people that are hearing her story now. There's people that are wanting to understand and um, accept what she's done and are trying to let her know that she done what was right for her and her children at that time. You know, and I think that's helped her to understand a bit more. It's helped her to come a bit more light on what she's done. 
because right. she knows people don't look at her in a bad way. We don't look at her in a bad way at all. Oh, uh, yeah, Pammy, I know what you mean about her being hard headed, but I'm the same way. If I have well, two hard heads together, you will not break me down. I am going out tomorrow. <laughs> Hello to East Devon's grandpa. Hi, grandpa. Hello. Oh, I haven't said that in a while. <laughs> My grandpa's been gone since I was little. So is his. Oh, really? That's his guiding spirit. Oh, oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, no, I'm not going out tonight. I'm going out tomorrow. <laughs> yes, tomorrow night. And I'll probably be going out Tuesday night with the... If you're not green. Yeah, with the candle yep. after I get off the live stream with Fluffy. Explore him with Fluffy. I'll probably be going out too. But our kids are staying here. Our puppy's but, staying here. Yeah, it's... Well, I don't know. Do you want Cody to go? It's easier for me. He might have to go have to go yeah because i can't that way if i have to i can sit on your lap and you can push us both back <laughs> I don't think so. but yeah uh okay pammy she's gonna be right back. back she'll be right back pa <clears throat> the thing with pammy pammy's very protective yeah she's like my sister she worries about yeah. everything yeah yeah. Well, that's not so bad. Sherry, Sherry's a powerful person. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> what does that mean? You feel like you're in, you're in water? It's possibly that you are going through some of the things that a spirit has yeah. went through. Yeah. I know um, one of my investigations that I've done before I record started recording them is that I was being choked and I was also being pulled under and drowned because I could feel my lungs filling up with water. Yeah, I've had that experience a few times as well where I felt like I'm, I'm drowning. It's very usual for them to do that, you know. Spirits, their best way of communicating with us is by letting us feel what they went through. That is the best yep. way for them to communicate. And sometimes those feelings ain't pleasant. <laughs> no, they're not. They're not. Like I said to you said the other day on it, you know, um, the paranormal field is an amazing place to be, yeah, but it's not always nice. Like you said as well, Chris, it's not always nice. And as people with abilities and people that do these investigations we see and feel so many things and it's not always pleasant it's not you guys have watched the shows on tv uh i know a lot of you have seen ghost hunters or ghost adventures or I mean, it's because there's a lot of people that follow me that's all it is sweet is this the first crossover on our channel Yeah, because they've never really crossed anybody over. This is the first time we've actually done this, except for, actually the first time I've done this was at Sack Riders yeah, but with yeah. Catherine. This is the second time, but first time doing it as a big group. Yeah. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. And, you know, there's going to be so much more that you guys are going to see and be around as well. This is just the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And I hope you guys enjoy this. Sherry's opened us up for a whole new As much as myself, Missy, <laughs> Jerry. I'll continue to open you guys. I'll continue. If it's helping you to be more in what you need to be, I'll help you to open more. Just be around me more. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, Wonder. Okay, Wonder Pop. Oh, sweetheart, I'm very sorry that it's the anniversary of your grandpa's passing. I send him lots of love and 
hope that he's having a lovely time up there in heaven and that he's okay. Who's that? Stubborn? Yeah. I'm sorry, honey. <sighs> but yeah, I always, your loved ones are always with you. Remember that. Yes. I enjoyed the stream. Sherry said she's enjoyed the stream numerous of times. Yeah, well, that's why I'm not leaving yet. All right. That's why I'm putting my, my investigation a bit later, like back. It don't matter when it's in my house. It's when I'm going out. I don't like to go out too late. Right. I hope everyone in chat is enjoying this stream as well. It's residual energy. The the lights like your um, your candles when you're communicating with spirits and when spirits are around they manipulate the candle light that's what they do they make the candles flash on and off it's yep. a residual energy from the um from the candle that they're able to manipulate yeah same when witches do their work when we use our residual energy as witches we you you'll see us do mad stuff with candles and stuff like that it's it's about having that that power within you and obviously spirits don't no longer have a physical body so all that they do and they communicate with is through their brain they have to make their brain believe they're picking something up to move it they can't just physically get their hand and pick it up it'd fall through it go through it they yep. need to use their brain, their their mind, to be able to do those things. So when they're there, it ain't about that they just pick it up. They have to put that energy into them to give them that energy to pick that thing up or to move it. And it takes a lot of their energy, a lot. Yeah. I mean, and, you know, a lot of people just think, oh, they just pick it up. No, they don't. They can't just pick it up. They ain't got a physical body anymore. They have to use their mind. The mind is the most powerful source of our body yep our mind controls everything i think it helped though to be uh sherry wonder pop asked could you be picking up on a plane crash in west virginia i, I don't know i was seeing the train but i have like like i said i could see that there was an explosion and stuff like that so there could have been a train accident there could have been an explosion i don't know you know, like I said, until I go round more and I get a fill of other places a bit more, I can't say because there's so many spirits that are there still that haven't really spoke out that much. Yeah. So, so we don't know. I, I, I did say there was a lot of residual children energy. There was adults and stuff as well. So it could very well be. I did say that I could see children and, and adults laying on the floor, so it could be something to consist with a plane accident when the plane's blown up. Right. You know, I, I don't know. Well, it helped with the kids to take Sephira because I think... I don't one, want... Unfortunately, she's a big part of the team. I know. She's I don't want her out no, to, not, that night. She's not going. When you're crossing crossing them over it probably would not be a good idea to take her no 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 i meant i meant the first time when we went out oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah it helped to get more trust with the kids because the puppy being there kids love puppies so yeah they do yeah i agree that that's why it's good that you take her but i think when you're going to do crossovers and stuff like that don't take yeah. her because she you know she's very open to them and one of one spirit or more could try and take to her you know what i mean so you don't want to do that right yep she's better being out the way when you do that it's awesome. better just to be awesome. you guys that guy would probably try to hurt her again you know, that's what i'm saying he's going to be pissed off he's going to be angry that you're doing this so you don't want to be having anything there that could be easily hurt by him you two yeah fair enough you got you guys are going to be there but you can speak out for yourself and protect yourself. She can't. Right. right. Yeah, That's kind of why I'm worried about Cody going, but he's our camera boy. I yeah, but he's, 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 he's a physical bodied person, isn't he? So he could say the prayer with you and say amen at the end. He's protected. Right. I mean, she can't. She can't sit there and go amen. If she was come out with amen, I think I'd be worried. I think you'd be getting rich. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
That's right. Right. But yeah, as a comment that I just seen, uh, sorry, Ghost Adventures is a is a crock. There's a there there was a funny thing about the Ghost Adventures show. A lot of it had to do with the people that were paying them to go on TV. Okay, Pammy. Yeah, no, I I used to follow um, Ghost Adventures and stuff like, but to be quite honest, now since doing what I do, I don't really find like the TV programs interesting anymore because I do it myself. Right. And. Um, you know, I've kind of took my own road now. Like, where before I would go and put Ghost Adventures and things on and watch them and Most Haunted and all the other pl things, I don't do it anymore because I witness and have that happen every day. I don't need to be watching them to know what's going to happen. You know what I mean? I, I have my own thing that I do. So, yep. for me, um, TV investigators are like the past for me unless it's going to be new teams on it, like people like us. Right. You know, I think that the paranormal field on TV new, need new teams. They need new people. Yep. Yep. If I had a, now, if I had a chance to do a video with Zach, Wonderful. Or somebody, I guarantee I would not pass it up. But, oh no, I'm not saying that if any of them ask me to interview, I'm not saying I've got anything against them, I haven't, you know what I mean, right. I'm a big fan of Zach Bagans, I love Zach Bagans, yeah, if I got put any of them come forward and go, would you come on an interview, of course I'd come on an interview, you know what I mean, but I just don't, I don't tune into them on TV anymore, if they were to ring me and go, can I have an interview with you and could you come on an investigation with us, hell yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean, of course you would, you'd be stupid to say no, wouldn't you? Right. So, not in any way am I downing them or saying they're not, you know, they're not worth it. Of course, I, I like I said, I'm, I'm a big fan of all of them. I just don't find the TV programs interesting anymore. I'd rather be out there with them doing it. Right. And you get to know them and what they're really about when you're doing it that way. Because not right. all of the investigators you see on TV are genuine. The ones I would like to actually try to get a hold of is the Wraith Chasers. Hmm. Yeah. And he's not far from me. Exactly. Like, you do get it. You do get a lot of hate for the paranormal investigators on TV. So you don't really know what's real and what it ain't. And people saying, oh, they've, they put things into it. Or at least if you're there... And you're investigating with them and that. You kind of see if they're genuine or not. Yep. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. If I was in a, like, at an investigation and somebody started faking something, I'd leave. Right. Because I don't agree in it. I don't agree in it. I'd be like, I'm sorry. Thank you for inviting me. But if you do this to fool people to get more views, I don't want to be part of it because I, I'm actually real. You know? Right. Well, we had this I'd go. I wouldn't even give him a second, second look. We have this friend that says, "Oh no, I I don't believe in that clickbait. Uh, why why would you clickbait? Because it's right there, three of them, you know." Well, right. so we were doing in the, well, Chris was doing an investigation with him, and his girlfriend, so called, started doing the clickbait thing, and when Chris. Or when Chris told about it, because I just wanted to see if it scared him or not. But uh, the guy goes, "Well, I didn't know anything about it." Bull crap! You're the one that probably told her to do it. You know. And I'm like, "That's it. I'm done. I don't, I don't like that bullshit." It could be. Why would you clickbait when it when it's right there? The right. Place, you know? Exactly. But um, sadly, there are people that do that. And that's why you have to be careful in the paranormal field. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why I get so angry when, like, good teams and real teams get crap for what they do. You know what I mean? It really pees me off because you've yep. been trying to keep the paranormal real. Because the paranormal is real. Right. You know? 
You don't need to fake evidence. They can do things their self. Right. And there's many, many shows on here that are genuine and legit that show that very thing, that they are true, they exist, and they communicate, and they do a lot of other things. Right. My channel's one, your channel's one, most of you guys in the room, you've got amazing bits, you know what I mean? We're all the real deal. Some people are just stupid, I guess. I can't explain it. You've got people in here that, right. that go on and just, just to try to get the views, just try to get thousands and thousands of subscribers, but they don't care. They just want to make that money, right. but hey, but then you got the ones that are actually out there doing it that are getting don't get, it. don't get me wrong. It's like I say to everyone, anyone that comes on YouTube wants to make money. They want right. to make money. They want to be something and they want to be known for what they are. But there is a difference between ones that are money driven and ones that actually do care about their profession. Yep. You know what I mean? And... You can tell the difference. You know what I mean? I couldn't give two tosses if I had two people that come to my room every day, yeah? It's not about the views. It's the loyalty and the fact of showing that the true love and the reason we're here is for the spirit world. Exactly. We're here for. Yeah. And to help people that have lost loved ones. Yeah. Exactly. That's what we're here for. That is it. Simple, yeah. But I, I appreciate it. And to teach. We are here to teach and to learn people. That is what we are. We are we are leaders. We're leaders because we have people follow us, just like the guys that follow us, we follow them. So they're leaders. We're all leaders of our own profession. Yep. You know what I mean? It's how you choose to do it. You can either be crook and do it the wrong way, or you can be real. You're not always going to get evidence. You're not always going to get communication with spirits, but there's always another day. Another day, another place. Exactly. Well, it was really interesting to have you be with us, you know, and help us. So that's... Uh... That was Sweetheart, that's what I'm here for. If I come on to a place and I meet someone and I like them and I know they're genuine because I'm very good at picking that up, yes, I've made a few little mistakes and I've trusted some people I shouldn't have, but I've learned my lesson now. But generally, I'm really good at picking up people, yeah? And yeah. when I see a team that are genuine and legit and I like them, I will do whatever I can to help them. Right. That is what I'm here for. I'm here to grow people as well as grow myself. That is what I'm here for. You know what I mean? If you can't help each other, then what's the point? If you can't help each other and you can't be together and work together in the things that we love doing, then what's the point? <coughs> well, I will let you know that your interview has over 100, what, 113 or something? It has over 100 views already. It's because a lot of people like listening to what I say because I make sense and because when I speak about what I speak about, I, I speak in depth because I see so much. Yep. Everything that I say and I, I learn you guys is because I want you guys to be the same. You know what I mean? If yep. I can help you guys to open, if I can help you guys to be more of who you want to be, I'm going to bloody do that. Yeah. I wished I had people to do that when I started. I didn't. I learned on my own. You know what I mean? But if now, nowadays, there's so many more of you. So it's so good that in this time, there are people that step forward and want to help. You know what I mean? And I know how hard it was to get to where I've got. And I know how much passion people have in their hearts when they want that so badly. So I'm going to help people to get there. Right. Awesome. It's what the Lord and Divine gave me the gifts for. The Lord right. and Divine created me to be this person. Yeah. Uh, right now, the video that we, or the interview we did with her, is at 108 views. Uh, East Devin wanted you to know that Donnie said thank you, and he just crossed over. 
I'm very glad that he's crossed over and you're very welcome, East Devon. That's yeah. what we're all about. We're about the, the, the sincere and the loyal and the real teams only care for the well-being of the spirits. Oh, you guys are all that. You're, that's why I love all you guys, because yeah. you're like me. That's why I support you guys. Uh, East Devon also said he's got a couple wraiths in his local graveyard. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, I don't want to cry when you said that. That was sweet. But so happy. You might have been the protector, though. That's why she left. Lorraine and Ed Warner spread awareness. Yes, they did. They were like the. Well, they exactly we are we are like the next ed edward and, and lorraine uh, <coughs> lorraine we are all of us are we've all got those abilities and those things within us that we want other people to to understand and to follow you know what i mean so we're all um masters of our time you know some of us could like when we pass away be very well known investigators and be in the book like others you don't know that right you know, if you don't go for what you want, then you'll never know. That's why you have to work. You have to take falls. You have to take hate. You have to take all of that. The best investigators do. Keep going. Yep. Ed and Lorraine were like... Hey, Tara Cole. Welcome to the stream. Hi, Tara. Welcome, honey. Pammy... I would have loved to have met him. I would have loved to have met him. She got to meet him. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. They're like, they're, like, they're like two people I'd have loved to meet. Yeah. Yep. They were like the pioneers for the... And they have the numerous of books on it. They well. are. They are the pioneers of paranormal. They are what made the paranormal. So my thoughts and prayers go out to the family. And I know that Ed and, Ed and Renee are... are no, Lorraine. Lorraine. Not, yeah. Why did I say Renee? I don't Probably know. Probably because of Renee. Hello, Terry Cope. How are you, my sweetie? But I know that Ed and, Ed and Lorraine are up in heaven now together, so. Yes. Okay. And we send love and blessings to you, Lorraine and Eddie, and be together and be at peace. Be with each other in the heavenly light with the Lord and divine. Be at peace with your soul. And remember that you're the most amazing paranormal researchers we ever known. And we, it was a privilege to know you and to know your your work. So might it be, amen. And yep. just think, just think, the people that they help cross over, oh, they're, yes. talk, they're probably talking to right Not now. Not just the people that they've crossed over, but the families and the lives hey, that no. they've touched and saved as well. They've saved so many people from hauntings and stuff like that. They are the truly amazing people they were. They still are. They always will be. Yeah, I'm okay, Terry Cope. Thank you, darling. How are you? You missed the whole recap, Tara. Please, if you guys have not checked out uh, Sherry's page, Paranormal World Investigators, please go check her out. Check everybody out. Check uh, also out. in the process, go check out each other. We'll all grow together. And Tara, you missed it. We crossed somebody else. I did the... Uh, I did. More or less the countdown to this video here earlier. I oh, right. put up four small ones because we were having a malfunction with her phone camera. It was almost like Abraxas, are you a medium? What camera keeps going on? Some you know what I'm thinking, Sherry? Sometimes I Believe, I believe I am. Guys, could I just ask you to give me just two minutes? I just need to run to the loo because I'm dying to go to the toilet. I'll be back in two seconds. Go ahead. Back, Pine, you can talk to me in a minute. Go ahead. I believe I am to a point. It's I've been have I've had them let them know that they're around by showing themselves to me, but it's not always. And the thing about the <laughs> camera, the thing about the camera, I'm wondering if that spirit, that guy, 
was didn't messing with want, it. Yeah, didn't want me to record any. Prob it could have been. And before we go, we're going to Hello, Miss Monty. Hey, Miss Monty. Welcome to the family, honey. Hey, riding dad. Okay, hey, guys. Riding. How are you, riding? Guys in the chat, let me know for the ones that were here from the whole recap of the investigation from Tuesday. Let me know how you guys, what you guys thought of it. And Sherry helped East Kevin, uh, pa uh, awesome. send someone in some light. Earlier, yep. Which was awesome. Uh, we got an awesome, amazing, and that was from the same person. <laughs> it was awesomely amazing. I'm happier. Yeah. I'm almost at peace, like lighter now already, and I ain't even there. I <coughs> but yes, guys, we do appreciate each and every one of you guys coming in here. This was a really great experience. It was. I've never, never had the. Ha I've never had emotions and stuff like that. It's just like, hit me. <laughs> I'm grateful that you guys keep coming in here day after day when I'm on, even if I'm just talking about BS nonsense. But it's also. Getting to connect with you guys every day that I'm on. It's kind of refreshing. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, no, I agree there. Um, I well, do agree great. there, Chris. It is about the spirits, but it's also about our loyal fans, people that follow us, right. our family. Right. You know, we wouldn't be where we are and be who we are if it wasn't for you guys. Right. So... You guys are always welcome to come in here. <coughs> um, we're looking for people to come up on our panel too, guys. I was, what I was can that? bring people up on this panel. No, I mean, um, for the interviews. No, I mean, since the whole review is over. I know, but for the interviews and stuff. Well, it's going on two hours. Thank you, Terry. Hey. Yeah. Okay. No. One or two hours. I know. Okay. I just want to let you know. I didn't know. But yes. Or something. If it wasn't for you guys coming in here, my channel would be nothing. Nothing I'm doing would be seen or anything like that. It's almost like we make a difference. You know, it's like, it's cool. And I'm sure Sherry can agree with it. Oh. It does. It start. Don't get me wrong. It does start with us to put out that video for you guys to view. But it's people like you that keep coming back day after day, or coming back every other day, or, or something like that. I get that. I get that. A lot of the people that support you, that are like you, do get your channels going to places, but. In truth and in fact, it is you yourselves that keep your channel going. At the end of the day, you're the ones that put the videos up. You're the ones that go to the people and ask them to come on your panel. You do what you can to keep your channel going. It, it's right. just an inspiration and something even better when you've got people that want to sit with you and help you to become Correct. more. It is an amazing feeling, and it is. And it's the same with the fans. The fans being there, your support, the comments in the room, all the things you put in makes a difference. It does. Yeah. I love everybody here. And Terry, so Terry Why, babes? I do plan on making my way back up that way as soon as I get my income tax to grab a load of my stuff out of our storage shed. She's in Ohio, right? Yes. And, well, that's one of the places on the west. Because and... I have family in Ohio, so... I would not have a problem whatsoever to come and film with you. 
exactly that is what it's about real people do not mind giving other people that lift you know what i mean like real investigators real people that are of the paranormal do not care if somebody else starts doing better than them you know it, it, it should be a privilege and knowing that you've helped them to get there you know what i mean i'm not one of these that like oh well i was going in supporting them and now they're getting more than me so i'm not supporting them anymore i'm not that sort of person yeah it's about everybody growing we all grow at different stages. We all grow for different reasons. Okay, Terry. She's down by Cincinnati. Oh. She's, her family's far north from you. We're in Fostoria. She's but, from Fostoria. Yeah, but we can go to Fostoria and then just head up, you know, that way. Down that way so I have no problems making a detour towards Cincinnati. Yep. On my way back up to Michigan. The only part I don't like about Cincinnati what? is all the traffic on the expressway. Well, what's better, Cincinnati or Cleveland? Cleveland. <laughs> I thought he'd say Cincinnati. No, uh, when we went down to Georgia and Alabama for spring vacation mm -hmm. that one year, we went through Cincinnati. And it seemed like it took us three or four hours to well, get through. Well, let me tell you, Columbus ain't no better. To get through five miles of expressway. Columbus ain't any better. I mean. You know, it's at times like this I wish I did live in a place like you guys because like over here there's only so much you can go to, but over where you live there's so many different places. Right. Yeah. And I hear you guys talking about different places to go. I just sit here like for God's sake, I wish I could go as well. Like, <laughs> that is one of my big, big wish lists. One of my things on my list is to go to America and go to some places and that is something I've got to do. I would love to have you here, Sherry. Well, I'm planning on it. I want to get over there to, you know, do some investigations, meet some, some teams. You know, I was going to come over and go and see um, Mal Mal 13 and um, see some other guys. I'd love to see you guys in here uh, yeah. as well. Go out for a nice meal, go and have dinner and spend time together. It would be amazing to be able to actually do a live one with you, standing there with us. I'd love it. I've got so many people over there, though, that want to meet me. I think I'm going to have to be there for more than a month because I'm going to have to meet so many different people. <laughs> Mud, I think do some people are going to have to like meet halfway and meet, meet in the middle. Yeah. Like they got people got to remember I'm not from America. I do not know America. I wouldn't have a clue how to get around it or Heck, she just can defect and just move here. <laughs> no, it's probably got her kids and grandkids and right. stuff. Two over there. Yeah, Austin. She's tired. She just like hey, baby girl. Um, Austin, what? make us some uh make us some macaroni and cheese. Uh, but yeah, I would, it would be awesome for you to come here, and of course by that time I'll have a vehicle, so I'll be able to get out to more places, which I am waiting on my income tax to come. I have to go right. to places and stuff, or people get down to me and stuff. And oh, I am planning to try and start because I would like to be able to go off and go to places when people need me. And at the minute, I can only do so much. Right. You took my phone with you. You took my phone. I'll go out of my way to like go and help people. I've done it for my friend Vanessa. Her house was really haunted and she's getting some really bad stuff going on there. And I went and visited her and ended up staying down there for a month. Right. Hopefully it could be longer than that even. 
hoping if I'm coming to America, it's going to be more than a month. It's going to be a few months because I'd like to get some time over there. And yeah, we would all love it. Let's see if they made any changes to my taxes. What? Uh oh. It should be next Thursday when we get back. next Thursday. Said I entered something wrong. Oh, that's what it was. What? 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 I'd love it. I'd love it. I just, uh, it's one thing I've always wanted to do is go to America. But I felt, like I said, if I was going to go there, I'd have to go for a few months. It's not somewhere you could go for a couple of weeks. There's so much to see and do over there. Right. I'm not just doing investigations, but seeing places over there as well and buildings and things to go to and see and. You know, just chilling, having a bit of a holiday as well. It's not all going to be <coughs> investigations, but a right. majority of it will be because that is my whole point of going over there. Yep. The meeting the guys that support me, that is my, my plan. Of course, you're going to have to take a couple of days off here and there to rest and relax, especially from certain places. Exactly, places. and that could be when I get to know you guys without the paranormal, you know what I mean? And, and the other guys that I meet as well, you know what I mean? Right. This is what I try to stick out to everybody. Yes, I'm an investigator. Yes, I've got this, I've got that, but I'm not, I'm not someone that's coming about to do those things. I, You know, I sincerely I am your friends, your family. And, you know, I, I have a lot of respect and love for you guys, not just because you do the paranormal, just be, as people. And I want to spend time with the guys that that you are as well. Right. Yeah, I want to see you doing your paranormal, but I want to see you, you know, for just you normal, everyday life, you know. And I guarantee when that happens, she's going to want me to cook everybody breakfast. Uh, uh, that's what I'm saying. I'd like I, I, when I'm there. I want to. I want to taste people's different cooking, and I want to. You know, I want to see what people do in the day when they're not investigating. Right. Stuff. And I mean, I want to go and have that time with them as well. I want to get to know them as a person as well as an investigator and researcher. You know what I mean? I want all of it. Right. You know, and it's the same for them. They want that from me. You know what I mean? I'm coming there as an investor, but I'm coming there as a oh. friend as well. <laughs> That'd be awesome, East Devon. If I was a billionaire, I would be going. I would quit my job. I would have a couple friends. I am hiding mine. That's the problem. Everybody. I would be me. throwing one heck of a party. Oh yeah, we've got to do that because everyone's going. We need to do a party for Sherry. Yes, yeah, so I think we do need to do that. We need to do a paranormal get together party a massive huge party music food drink yep. and just have a, a way all the time just have a laugh you know yeah i'll be able to That'd be if so i was cool. a billionaire i'd be able to go see mads entertainment be town paranormal in fact i'd fly over to the uk hit up sherry and a few other people, then kidnap them and bring them back. That's what I'm saying. Everyone says that. Everyone says they're going to kidnap me and everything. It's like, for God's sake. Oh, there's one. Kidnap me. Yeah, you you're like me. not going home. And I'm like, what do you mean I ain't going home? Oh, you're staying with us. There's yep. There's uh, foodie. There's West. Uh, what, uh, what is it? It is. It's the plans as well. It's getting the money. It's getting over there. There's a lot of stuff and a lot of ideas that we've got going for when we get up, when I get over there. I've got some stuff that I'm doing here as well to help some teams. Right. Yeah, and we're going to get in both of them. And of course... I'd fly Sherry in a jet. 
there and of course if i go over there i'm gonna have to figure out some way to get into the catacombs just so i can say i was there yeah no the catacombs is a a, a big thing over here stuff like that yep hellfire hellfire caves yeah there's quite a few of them <laughs> she's also wanting to run a motel yep i'm telling you i'm not being funny pammy's got ideas seriously i'm not going to go into detail because that ain't for me yeah either. i know She's got some big ideas, some big, big, big ideas. And if it comes to light, it's going to be fucking awesome. Excuse my language, but that is the only way I can You're fine. explain it. It's the only way I can explain it. And it's going to be awesome for a lot of teams as well. It's going to be amazing getting together and, you know, hopefully yep. it's going to come to light. And by that time, I should have my tattoo and everything else. <laughs> Driving a tour bus. Tour bus? What are you talking about? It's going to be a limo. Don't get me wrong, the tour buses <laughs> are quite nice. They are like limos inside. You've got your bedrooms, you've got all of that stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, oh. <coughs> Hey, ham, um, hire out Hampton Court. Oh, that would be lovely. Yeah. I want to get. I want to do some sort of fundraising thing where we get loads of investigators together in that year in England, and I'm wanting to make money that can go towards my team and other people's um, teams. That's what I'm trying to do, and to get the money to get over to America, because that's what I want to do. That would be awesome. got big plans like we've all got big plans you know what i mean like i ain't just like here to do the investigations i want to make make people in this world that are struggling and got problems illnesses you know homeless things like that. i want to be able to to make a difference to people as well Ow. yeah you know what i mean Ow. 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 well East Devon, that's where I want to go. The the catacombs in um, Paris are very dangerous, and apparently people that go in there don't come back out. Right. So I would be very, very, very careful about going down there. They talk about there's meant to be weird, like, creatures and stuff down there. There was a weird thing about that. They think there's something else down there as well, but there's been videos and stuff done on that place where people have got there was an investigator that had gone in there and he never come back out but he was never found right yeah you know what i mean it, it it's a very a very very dangerous and a very bad place that's another perfect place to go stanley house oh yeah the stanley hotel that's the one hotel where Stephen King will never go back to. He ended up writing the book The Shining there. There's meant to be a place that I'm meant to be going on in um, October, but we don't know if that's definite for definite yet because it's, it's somebody else's thing. But that's a, a, a castle place in um, Wales. That's been on TV. That most haunted went to when they first started out. Yeah, I think it's U Yushin Yushin Castle or something. It's like really, 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 really haunted. Really, one of the most haunted places. Weshmere. Catacombs is totally banned now and punishable. I'll give my right arm to, or my left arm to go. 
The old lady won't let me give up my right, my left arm to go to the catacombs. That is true, Dead Paranormal. If you go, if you if you try to go into them now and you get caught, you could get <clears throat> you could get prison time and that for that. Wow. Because it's dangerous. It's not. They don't want anyone going down in there. There's. I'm not being funny. There's things that they know about that place, right? I'm not being funny. When when you went down, when you see Zach Bagans go down, when they went down with the police officers and that, yeah, you could see that there was these massive, like, sort of net things all up in certain areas. Why would they have massive, massive nets like that if there isn't something down there? Right. That's not Keep nice. something down it's there. Like they, knew, they know stuff, but they're not letting you know. It's like right. you would see that, 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 like, the police officers looked for it being down there. And when you were asking, when Zach was asking them questions, they wouldn't tell tell him what what that was there for or anything. Right. Get loads and loads of time for going down there. Believe me, because it's very dangerous. People have lost their lives. It's a place where yep. thousands of people are, you know, their 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 souls and their bones and that are down there. It's it's disrespectful. To, to be go down there because you're walking on their bones in places. Yep. It's not a nice thing, you know what I mean. But I, I see it in the video of Zach when Zach done it. He was sitting in that room with that girl that's got that paranormal show now. I guess there's a part of the catacombs in Italy too. Hmm. I've not heard about the catacombs in Italy. I know about the one in France, though, because there was that girl that he went in there with. She's now a paranormal investigator as well. She, she, she's got this show on TV. She's um, part of Zach's thing now, ain't she? Zach's got a new team out. Yeah. Well, they were in there, and they were in that room, and there was all of these people's skeletons and bones and that everywhere. And they were having to tread on them, and they were saying how they felt bad because it's people's bodies and that. Yeah. You just, I, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't go down there for that, that very reason, and for the simple fact that it's dangerous. And there's a lot of unknown stuff down there that people are not aware of. Right. You know what I mean, them, the people that are aware of it are not here anymore. You'd be better at the vaults at. In the vaults at Edinburgh? Yeah. I want I'm not being funny. We've got some amazing places over here, like Hellfire Cave. I would Absolutely love to go awesome. there. Absolutely awesome place that is. I've seen it quite a few times and that, and that's one of the places I want to go to. Um, you've got... Um, I'd love to go to... Um, oh, what's that place called? The one with Stonehenge. I'd like to go to Stonehenge. Oh, yeah. I'd like to go to... Um, there's this place in Wales. But you've got the castle, but there's this place in Wales that's meant to be the gate to hell. And it's a hole. And you're meant to be able... You can go in it, but you you feel really weird stuff when you go in it. Zach done it. Nice. It was either Wales or Ireland. It's meant to be the doorway to hell or something, the gates to hell yeah. or something. It's like this black hole. Heck, I wouldn't mind going to Brevelia Island either. There's a lot of places. There's a lot of places. Like in America, I like that. I'd love to go to that place where Zach and that went to, the um, Dolls Island. Yeah. that I was saying that was in Mexico. Yeah, like that, them sort of places I want to go to, and there's got quite a few of the asylums and stuff that I want to go to. Yeah. I'd love to go to some of them. I would love to go to Waverly. Yeah. Uh, there's a catacombs in London. Is there? I, I know that you've got the uh, London Underground. Uh, not un Underground. You've got that the London Dungeons and stuff as well. That's another place. Another one 
the biggest one that's the number one on my bucket list is always going to be Bob Mackey's. Bobby Mackey's. Yep. I want to go Bobby Mackey's. I love the um, shows on that place. I do want to go there just because of who he is as well. Cause he was a legend. I'd love to go there yep. just to, you know, it'd be amazing. Uh, I've already done one of my things off my bucket list already. And well, I've got two things off of my bucket list. It was to make my paranormal team, and it was to like fulfill my dream that I've always wanted to do. I've got two of them, but I've, there's so many things I want to do now. Like obviously, I've been going to places, so I'm doing that. But <laughs> like, there, there's just there's a wider network I want to go to. I don't just want to stay in England. I want to go all over the place. Yeah, and the one that was high on my bucket list was Mansfield Reformatory. They ended up filming uh, Shawshank Redemption there, the movie. And that got me very excited. To be quite honest with me, like anything that's to do with asylums, hospitals, prisons gets, gets me going. Yeah, it does. I love them places. They are the best places to go, and I also do like churches and graveyards. Graveyards and churches are another really good, good way to communicate with spirits. Definitely. Wow. Uh, we have a haunted insane asylum up the street. I live in New Wow, Newtown, Sandy Hook, Connecticut. That would be someplace I wouldn't mind going to, too, unfortunately. But they don't allow people there. Yeah, no, there's some places that are off bound, aren't there, really? Like, to be quite honest. It's like there was this place. Um, there, Like, you wouldn't be able to go there, but there was this place that I watched on TV, and it was on, um, oh, what was it on? Um, Top Gear, and they they done this challenge with these cars, and it was around this this abandoned sort of village and factory thing that had like um. It had that radiation thing around it. Yeah. And they had to go round in the cars, and whatever car got got out was the winner. Well, two of them managed to make it out, but one of them the car broke down in the middle of where the um Ooh. where it was going on like all of the um the radiation was and everything and he said that he started feeling a bit funny and stuff like that and um they had to wear this special clothing and they had to have these meters in their car to read yep. the radiation levels because it was really really bad yeah. there was some sort of like disaster or explosion that happened on it and it caused the radiation thing and was that it? Couldn't live on it is that that place i think over in russia uh, it is, yeah. I think it is in Russia, yes. Yeah, uh, Ghost Adventures was there once, too. Yeah, yeah. But you have to have wear this special gear and stuff yep. because it's, like, really badly radi radiation all around it. Loads. It's out of the garbage. Yeah. Uh... It might be, yeah. It was really, really weird. It, like, it was like it, it was a ghost town. It was a ghost town. You see all of the windows yep. smashed out from the explosion. People probably did lose their lives there. You know what I mean? But it was a very a bad people thing that gets let off radiation and that. And, you know, and then a lot of the things around that area get affected and stuff now, like the animals and stuff like that. So it's really, really mad. Really mad. Oh. Uh. But yeah, the one I wanted to do was Mansfield bad. I ended up catching an apparition peeking around. I ended up get, hitting a cold spot going across my hand. It got me so excited, it made me cream myself. Figuratively speaking, people. Exactly. But I wouldn't mind getting out to... Like I said, Bobby Mackey's. I want to get out to the Axe Murder House and 
Iowa, I believe. Uh, I like to go out to the Clown Motel, too. Yeah, there's, there's loads of places over there. Heck, I wouldn't mind going through the old General Motors factory where my dad used to work. Mm. I've been in there when I was a kid, but that's about it. I want to go in there and actually try to do an investigation. You know, there's just so many places, so many places that we all dream of being able to investigate and that it's just getting getting into them places, isn't it? Yep. And stuff, you know what I mean? Just like the Randolph house here in town. Like, yeah, I go on I go on churchyards and stuff like that, but I like to stay within the law. I don't like breaking laws. I won't break right. into places that you can't get into or things like that. I don't do that. I right. Mean, I'd rather like ask for the permission and stuff, you know what I mean? But before I go into that place, I'd rather have get in contact with the owner, which he's out in California. I like to try to get oh, so in contact. If it's a place that's abandoned and there's ways to get in, and like you're not going to break anything or do anything, then it's fine. But I'm like, I just wouldn't go out of my way to make my way into a building that you can't get into. Is what I'm saying. Like, if right. there's a place that I come across and it's open, and you can get in it, I would go in it. There, it's abandoned. Nobody goes to it. There is a way to get in there. But it's still private property. I guess the, the neighbors watch it to make sure people don't get in there yeah, and no, all that. That's different. If it's private property and stuff, I won't even entertain it. I'd ask the owners. But if it's a place that's just abandoned, there isn't no private property on it, <coughs> then I'd happily go and do them ones. Obviously, yeah. I would walk around in the daytime if I found the place first because I'd want to know that everywhere's safe that where not to go because it ain't safe, you know what I mean? Because there's no point you just going to a place blind, you know what I mean? Especially like places like that, you need to go in the daytime so that you can get the feel for it in the daytime. You can see where the dangers are and where there ain't dangers so that when you go back at night, you know where to avoid and where you can go, you know what I mean? Right. And you also pick up on their energy in the daytime. So then you kind of get the feel for the places that you mostly feel them. Or right. see them, and you know to go to their areas. You know what I mean? Correct. And guys, for a lot of people that believe that a place is only haunted at night, no. If it's haunted, it's haunted twenty four seven. Yeah, no. All this crap that they only come out at night and they only do it at night. No, they don't. I have got amazing pictures and EVPs and things through daytime. They're just as active in the day than they are at night. Right. Entities have gone through me and in cemeteries entered me. Oh. Wow. Right. You always, always have to be smart when you're investigating. Investigating right. is a very serious and a very dangerous thing to do if you don't know what you're doing. So it's very good to know that you know what you're doing. And it is very important to be a smart investigator. You know what I mean? You don't go into places that are going to kill you or something could come down on your head, are you? You always right. have to make sure that places are safe for you and your team. You know what I mean? Always. And plus, especially if you go through it during the day, that way you can find out where all the holes. That's what I'm saying. You can see where are. the bad areas are, where the good areas are. You can see where things are falling down and where things are not safe to walk on. You 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 can get your your view to where to be and where not to be. You know what I mean? And at least when you go back, you at night you can go right, guys. We're not going in this area. We're not going in this area because this is happening. We would just stick right. to this. Uh, it's, it's about being safe. It, paranormal, you should always be safe. Yep. Always. 
I was watching a few shows before. Uh, what's the best thing, five best things to have in your investigation kit? And they say, they basically said, uh, notepad and pen. First aid kit. At least a digital camera. Hello, Paranormal Circle. Welcome back, Paranormal Circle. Uh, voice recorder. And at least your phone. Yeah, they are the very good things to have in your paranormal kit. But do you know, like, in my opinion, the most vital paranormal kit for your, 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 your investigations is yourself. Yep. You are the best tool. You are the best equipment. Your feelings, your senses, everything about us is able to pick up on that. Even if you're not even open. You'll, you'll go into places and you'll still be able to feel funny in certain places and you know something don't feel right. Yeah? The best tool in the paranormal field is yourself yep. and your instinct. That is what gets you through it. Heck, with cell phones nowadays, you got a camera, you got a recorder, you got a digital voice recorder, and you got the best thing for anyone, especially at night. You got your flashlight. Uh, yeah. They're all vital things and important things for your, yep. your kit. They are things that every paranormal in investigator should have, yes. But the main thing is yourself. Yeah? Your your EVP can say the words from spirits, yes. Yep. Your, your motion sensor can pick up things and energies, yes. Yeah. But those tools can't turn around and say to you, don't go into that place. Don't do this. Don't do that. They can only say so much. Your instinct is the most important thing in the paranormal field. Your senses are the most important thing. They are what get you through everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sorry, you, you guys. Know, if, you're, if you're in a room and you're feeling not good about that room, you don't feel comfortable, you don't feel safe, you're not going to go in it, are you? Right. That Your body is the best tool. Yep. No, the reason why I turned my video off, my oldest one brought me food. That way I don't have to eat in front of you. All right. But, yeah, no, you know, yeah, they are the best tools that what Chris wrote out, but also yourself. Always, always listen to yourself and what you feel. Never, ever ignore your sense and your gut feeling. That is the most prominent thing you need. Let her out. Yeah, correct. They used to, you know, th thousands of years ago when all this investigating used to start, they didn't have all these motion sensors and EVPs and everything. They had a simple recorder and that's it. You know what I mean? All that they worked on, all that they did was on their selves and what they felt. Then, obviously, as they started to pick up on those energies and they started to understand the different energies and what it's about, then that's when new equipment started coming out. In, right. You know, equipment started to be invented. But that was all that started to be invented through people's experiences through their body. Exactly. You know what I mean? It all started with no equipment. It started with just ourselves. And with the camera, it doesn't have to be a digital camera. There's people that still use the old Polaroid cameras. It could be any camera. Yep. I don't have an... I go out on investigations. I don't use night vision. And I get pretty good stuff. It's yep. about buying the right stuff and having the right equipment at the time. Talk good torches and things like that. You can get just as good as getting a night vision camera. Right. Yeah, you know I mean? And with me, when I go out to do my live streams from my phone, using the Streamlab, Streamlabs app now, I still get things. Exactly. 
I would say that my phone is one of my best tools for my investigations. You get some amazing orbs, um, visions of um, figures. Um, you'll get voices sometimes come over them. You know, your phone is one of the best tools. I yeah. think. And it's very sensitive to those things as well. So it's very easy to pick it up. Right. And, you know, all these people that go, oh, you shouldn't really use a phone. That's not really investigating. Yeah, it is. Of course it is. You're still picking up evidence. Yep. You know what I mean? And, and I, it's, it's easier because you can do it live. You don't have to pre-record the video and put it up. You can do it there and then. People were getting that experience there and then. And back in the 80s, what they used was 8 millimeter cameras and Polaroid uh, self-printing film. Yeah, the ones where you'd click it and the paper would come out the bottom and you flick it a few times and the picture appears on your right on your card thing. You know what I mean? They were just simple bits of equipment but got amazing evidence. This is what I'm saying. You know, you, when you're an investigation team, you don't have to go out and buy the most high-tech equipment and get the best equipment in the world. You can still get good evidence from, you know, equipment you buy that's cheaper. None of my equipment's really expensive and I've got some amazing stuff. Right. Okay, Pammy. Yes, go hook up the phone to the charger. Okay, sweet. See you in a minute, Pammy. Yeah, no, you know. You know, you don't need to have the most high-tech and best equipment you're seeing on these TV programs. You don't need it. It's nice to have it, but... It's, it's nice to have it, yeah. It's it not is, necessary. and I am going to get a night vision camera, and I am going to get these other bits, because they are do interest me, but... They're not vital. Shake it like a Polaroid pick. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. <laughs> uh, East Devon said, PWI, I just seen a black shape in my home. You've seen a black shape in your home? How you how you feeling at the minute with that being around? How, how are you feeling? Awesome, stop. Yeah, no, I use pendulum. I use my pendulum. I do use cards and stuff because I'm a witch as well. So, but yeah, I get some really cool stuff. I've also got dowsing rods. Dowsing rods are really amazing. I I the spirits. Hey, sure. I got a question for you. Yeah. I plan on making my own dowsing rods, okay? Right. Now, the clothes hangers I got has a plastic coating on it. Do you think that's going to have any effect on them? Yeah. Normally, it needs to be the metal, the metal ones. Okay. I could, can't find the metal ones down here anymore. <laughs> uh, you can get dowsing rods off of eBay and that. I got yeah. my dowsing rods off of eBay. I'll show them because I'm going to be on later. I'll put them up to the camera if you watch. Um, You'll see them. They're beautiful. Beautiful. And they are so good. To and they're... they're I paid. Leave it open. I think I paid eight pound. It was either eight or ten pound. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you can get t some lovely ones. You know what I mean? Oh. Yeah. Oh, good paranormal circle. Woo! Let's party. Woohoo! What? Yeah. No. Um. Definitely. Um. You can get them off of eBay and stuff. Yeah, I've seen them on there. If you wait till I get paid in that, I could buy some and send you them. Oh, okay. That's a gift. I'll send you some over. Okay. Then you've got a pair, haven't you? Yep. And the good thing about these ones is you can expand them right out or you can have them as short as you want as well. And they're, oh, they're really, nice. they are really, really good. You'll see them working later. You'll be amazed. They are yeah. absolutely amazing. Hey, Mr. Rocker Boggs. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the family. Yes, I'm feeding my face. ODS is saying go to the, the thrift store should find some wires wire hangers yeah
We have some. Mr. Rock for Logs, Mr. Rocker. Hello, welcome to the room. Uh, yeah, he's getting that drowning feeling again. Who is? It may be that you're just getting a residual energy around you, um, instead of paranormal. Sometimes some of the spirits that come around you will not show in their true form that, that they um, disguise their identity. So yeah. it may just be that you're picking up again on a drowning victim or something. Yep. We have been speaking about how, like, children and people have passed away and we've been in something quite deep today. So you may just be feeling their residual energy because obviously they've become aware that people know what's going on now and what's happened. Right. If it's worrying you, just do some prayers and... Just keep doing your prayers and do, if you've got sage, do some sage. If you've not got sage, put your stones out, light a candle. Just bring some positivity into your to your room. But I, I'm, I don't think it's anything negative. I just think that you're picking up on maybe children's spirit energy and stuff. Awesome. Mr. Rocker. Oh, welcome. Welcome. That'd be amazing. He's doing his first ghost hunt on June 18th. Oh, sweet. We'll be there. Yeah. I, I don't, I've got you supported. Let me have a look. We'll be there. We'll spar you, honey. That's awesome. That'd be good. It's good to, when I hear that people are going starting out and stuff. It excites me. I think, yes. No, I'm already supported to these guys, so that's cool. I'm waiting for his page to come up. It's going to be there absolutely amazing you doing that the ae i'll have to come and watch you need i got help. you as well you need any help go to sherry, <laughs> mm. sherry. A lot of people like me coming in their room because I, I pick up on a lot of things i just like supporting people i like to help people to yeah achieve their thing that's what i'm like Recap, Rebel, basically, we went through one weird investigation where we found a lot of stuff out. And um, Sherry was recapping everything. And uh, we ended up having, he's having uh, help us cross somebody over. Quite a few. Yeah, well, one person that we know of. I don't know who all went. I don't know how many spirits went with him, but... Yeah. Yeah, apparently there was um there was this fifteen year old boy and a few of the children's spirits went over with him. Yeah. So if you want to watch the whole thing, I guess you're gonna have to rewatch it, honey. Yeah, you're yeah. Have to rewind. <laughs> it's a lot yes, guys. Again, I can't stress this enough. Please check each other out in the chat. Uh it always does good when you go see, check out somebody new. This feels like a adult 1900s. It could be, very well be. You could be picking up on any sort of residual energy. Soldiers, anything like that. You know, if there was water and stuff, they could have fallen into the water. It can be yeah. a number of things. And, of course, you know what to do if you like them. Hit, hit that big red button, turn on their bell, leave a comment, hit the thumbs up on it. And if just... not, if their content's not for you, at least leave a comment in the video and hit the thumbs up so they know that you've been there. And you know what? You're just adding more and more people to your family. Right. So can you guys go ahead and uh, tell people about each other or whatever? Yes. They got to do. Like I say all the time, we're all individually different. Yep, we're all going to be what makes it unique. Yep. There is no team that does the same thing. We all do things differently. Same with our abilities. You know? Right. Welcome back, Pammy. Welcome back, babe. But yes. Everybody in here is different, but by everybody being that unique, 
and different. Ugh. We all have one common goal, though. Excuse we me. We do all have one thing in common. Well, we, we've got a couple of things that are all in common, really. Right. We're all created by the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And secondly, we have the love and passion for the paranormal and for spirits. We shared the same thing. We are seeking the same thing. But by being different in that and unique is what makes this family here what they are. Exactly. We are linked as one for through the love that we have, but we are very all uniquely different. We all bring that presence and that that place of excitement into our work because we're different. You know what I mean? We're what we you know, nobody can sit there and go, well, this is right and that's wrong and blah, blah, blah. There is no right or wrong way to do the paranormal. Just do it the right, right. way. All you've got to do is make sure you use protection and that you respect the places that you're going into and the spirits that are in it. Right. Well, and that you go in to this place with an open mind. Any, any paranormal, anything that you do, yeah, right, never automatically go in there thinking that you'll go, you know, it's haunted. It's not always haunted. There's so many different reasons to why things go on in people's lives and stuff, you know. We could go into lots of detail, but, you know, some of the hauntings that we think are hauntings are, in fact, things that we're we're putting into our home ourselves, negative energy that we're feeling. You know, um, right. if we've got a troubling moment, we can put residual energy from ourselves into our home and form a negative energy. Right. We can and do that. It's been proven. Yeah. That's and, where poltergeist you know, comes from. It's not always spirits. Poltergeist are formed by the same thing. But poltergeist can also be loved ones and can also be known as a noisy ghost, which is a ghost that makes loads of noise. Doesn't um, necessarily mean that it's bad. Some of them can be, but not all of them. You know what I mean? But right. poltergeist um, spirit forms are very well known to be something that we form ourselves. Mm-hmm. So when we're hearing these bangs and we're hearing these knockings and, and we're thinking that's a, a spirit, it's in fact the things that we've got that are affecting us are coming out in this spirit we formed in our home. Huh, yeah. And that spirit is us. It's not, you know, somebody that's passed away or something negative. It's us. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. East Devon. Uh, but the thing is, just because they drowned in the sea doesn't mean they can't go from place to place either. Spirits all over. Right. Spirits are free to an extent. Spirits can go anywhere they want to go. They can get to places within seconds. Yeah. They are completely different to what we are. Yeah. Right. You know, so a, a, a person can lose their life in, a, in, in the sea, in a river, in a lake, on land. It doesn't mean they're going to stay to that place. They will move around. You know, they were people. They moved around. They did things every day in their life. They still do that in their spirit form. They still walk around and look at things and take things in and do that sort of thing. They don't stay to the place they died. All right. You know what I mean? They, 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 they walk around. They experiment. They do different things. And then sometimes they'll visit their place of death because it's a place... They remember waking up from. Right. They remember being different. You know what I mean? So a spiritual energy never stays in one place. It's always moving around. Always. Thank you, Mr. Rocker. What? Give me a second. I'll read it. Uh, He says, you guys are awesome. Oh, thank you. And you're awesome as well. Yes. Just always have an open mind, always use protection and prayer, and always be respectful. Right. 
that is the main things to be an investigator. Obviously, yeah, know your stuff, do your research, understand the spirit forms, understand what they are, what they're about, learn the different phases of hauntings and stuff like that. Always be aware of these things to be an investigator because if you're going to become an investigator, then you're, you're giving yourself that promotion that you want to help others. Yeah, so always, always make sure that you you research and you study and you understand what it's about being involved in the spiritual realm, being involved in these investigations. It's not just about picking a camera up and going and doing your investigations. You have to have that acknowledgement of what the spiritual realm is about to understand it more. I'm not saying you need to know everything, but you need to know the vital things like safety, how right. you cross them over, how you communicate with them, different devices, you know, when you're going into home, different ways you can cleanse and bless the homes, how you can help the people, all these different things that you need. They are very important. You don't just want to go, right, I want to become an investigator. You say that tomorrow and the next day you're an investigator. You need to work to that because the spiritual world and the spiritual world is a very, very dangerous and tricky place to be in yeah it, it's full of manipulation it is full of deceit some of it you know you have always got to be aware of those things not everything we talk to is in fact nice okay? and you've got to remember right. that and you need to be able to understand both sides of it you need to know about negative spirits and you need to know about good spirits you need to know what different things you need to know about your different um kind of haunting protectors your different guides your different um angels you can call on and things like that you need all of this relevant in your paranormal you do need that yeah they, they are the ones that are there to keep you safe you need to have this awareness you know what i mean it, the investigate, you know, investigators and investigations isn't just something you decide to do and then you just do it. It it takes a lot of dedication and it's time consuming. And when you've got the abilities and you're opening those abilities more, you've got to be giving to what you're seeing and what you're receiving, and that can be difficult. It, you know, the paranormal and being spiritually open is not something that you you take on lightly. Once you take that on. That's for life. Right. Yeah. That is for life. And it's not always going to be nice. You're going to experience and feel some mental things. You're going to experience some of this mental stuff. So what? what just else? always, always be aware and just be open to everything and always be open to the possibilities of what may happen. Anybody that's an investigator knows that they take risks doing what they do. Yep. And unfortunately, some of us takes more risks than what's needed. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Some people do walk over, over that line that they don't need to walk over. And they find out the hard way. They do. And that's why I, I believe really strongly in doing your research. I believe very strongly in protection. Always. Why are the arguments? Even when you're not investigating and you're not doing anything to spirit still cleanse your home and cleanse you your body is open to energy every day what, you know what, what i mean what, just because we're not investigating doesn't mean that they're not trying to to connect with us so you are, always have to make sure you keep yourself safe as well so don't sit there and think oh well i'm at home today i haven't investigated so i'm all right still like that sage Still put a stone out, still do a candle and a prayer because they're still around you. Yep. What what are the archangels' names? I know Rock there's, there's hundreds, darling. There's hundreds. Okay. Hundreds of them. Okay. Yeah, and the, okay. the main ones that I go for is Saint um Saint Michael. And there's Matthew, there's Gab Gabriel, there's Uriel I um go for as well. You've got um Matrion. Um Obviously, I'm a witch, so I go for my goddesses and that as well. So I've got Hades as my uh, my god, and I've got Hike as my female. Yeah, Hike, Hika is a, a a female goddess that is of like death 
and life and a, a number of other things. And then um, Hades is the same, but in the male form. You know what I mean? I pray to him many things because obviously I'm like I said, I I was christened as a Christian, but I I was when I grew up I didn't feel that the way of Christians was my way. I believed and I loved God, but I didn't believe the way the church was put. So I don't follow church or anything like that. Right. I go by the love that I have for the Lord. But my way of life and my way of being is me being a witch. So it's my gods and goddesses that I go to mainly. You know, and my mother earth and mother nature, that is who I am. Mm -hmm. I just happen to love the Lord as well. So I bring him into that. Okay. I mean, they're both creators. So. Oh, you're fine. I thought you were done. So it's my fault. Just question to Sherry. Yes. I spoke to a friend of mine when I started to work and live on the estate of a rich and famous person. Found, hung, um, fund, hung himself, and I. I look where I am. Oh my God, dude! And all of a sudden. His, he appears to where we are. There was a witness and yelled at me, you rose the dead. So are you saying that you see him at the time of um, his death? Because if you see him at the time of his death, then you had a crisis apparition, which is where when a, a, a person passes over, Right. Their energy, their spirit will then form one last time for their loved ones or people that they know. And then you would normally get like a phone call or some sort of clarification that that person has passed away at that time, that you see them in your room and you know that couldn't be possible. It's, it's a, crisis, a crisis apparition. It's where they form to you. Some of these crisis, crisis apparitions can then become guardians of you and come back and protect you. But... Five, Nine times out of ten, yeah. crisis apparitions just show the once, and then they go, and then they become like their normal spirit, or they become a guardian, like I said, or something like that. So, you probably did um, uh, get that. Thirty k. Well, they keep popping. No, you've not rose the dead. It's just that you you're open to Five things, minutes. aren't you, Pammy? So you're you're sensing and picking up on spirits around you. And, um, you know, at the time that, you know, you knew this person and he hung himself, at that moment that he hung himself, it showed itself to you guys somewhere else. So it's a crisis apparition. It's just one last time showing themselves to you. Wow. I don't understand what you're saying then, Pammy, because you're, you're yeah. kind of confusing me with what you're saying. No. Let me reread. To a friend of mine. Are you saying you see him after he died? Like you see him a few weeks later? Because that's normal. Sometimes they will show up in places and show up to you. You know, if they're, they're known for that area, that place, they're going to be there, aren't they? Like I said, they move around, they do things. So if you're saying you see him a few weeks after he passed away or a few months, then that's just his residual energy, his spirit, just visiting where he's familiar with. Yeah, then they will. Yeah, no, they do. It's because you've got these, you have got these sort of abilities, sweetheart. You, you know, you are open to seeing things, so you're going to see their energies and that because you're open. Right. You know what I mean? You just have, like, you find it comforting. That's a good thing that, you know, a lot of people that go into opening their abilities and becoming something become quite scared of it, and. Don't be scared of it. This is who you're meant to be. You know, like, obviously we're going to have our moments, but, you know, just always, always be aware that you need to be open and understand that you're going to get strange feelings. You're going to get strange experiences. That is what this is. You know, this is meant to right. be the unknown. Not everybody sees it, even though everybody's capable of doing that. 
we're not all open. Now, considering... know, but then he's obviously he's just showed himself. Some spirits will visit certain people that have something that 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 they look for in that can help them. So you know, if some of these spirits that come to your home and come to you come to you because you've got something that's relevant to what they need. So they come and visit you. They come for you to you for help. They come to communicate with you. You know, you don't have to be in the same town or the same country for a spirit to visit you. Right. You know what I mean? So it's natural. It's normal. If you fear them, then it is going to be difficult to communicate with them. Don't fear them. They're still beings. They're still human. They're just in spirit form. Treat them no different to how you treat them if they were alive. You know, I, I'm not going to say it don't get scary at times. Of course it does. But, you know, you've got to understand that we're all going to be like that one day. We're going to be like them. We're going to do the same things as what they do. We're going to yeah. come down and look after loved ones. We're going to walk around and we're going to be going between worlds or some of us are going to get stuck for different reasons. You don't know, do you? But, you know... <laughs> A lot of people have got to learn to be more accepting to the spirit world because we are very much connected to it. Very much so. Yeah, no, I get that. That's what I'm saying. And that's, you know what I mean? And you're going to get it. You're going to get it where some negative spirits try to come to you at times. You're going to get that no matter where you are. But that's what you've got your prayer and things for. You just always, always, always have to be yourself and believe in what you believe in and be truthful and be who you are, you know. Okay. Uh, I know this is going to sound weird for you guys, but whoever's playing with Sherry's microphone, go ahead and say hi. Try to use your energy and get enough energy up just to say hi. I think they're just trying to figure out what it was that was she was talking into. Hey, Tony Raptor. Can you talk? Guys, can you come to the mic and talk? Hey, Tony. Can you come and say hello? Probably. Can you talk into it, guys? Is he trying to let us know that you was here? I know that you do like to do that, don't you? Yeah. I didn't know if you picked that up or not when when they were doing it. It sounded like they were tapping on it or something. Yeah, no, I get that quite a lot in my investigations and stuff. You'll hear like the mic being mucked about with all you'll see the phone slightly move or it's really weird things. I just wanted to look, you know, look there and there. Okay, um, whenever you're ready to talk, you're more than welcome to.
And no, the doggy's not a miniature horse either. Her dog. Yeah, no. They're, there's a lot of energy around here all the time. I know that it's because they're probably getting excited because they know that I'm meant to be going live tonight as well. So Yeah. They'll enjoy that. Whenever I get on, I will be on tonight, but I feel quite drained at the minute, don't you? I did until I ate something. Yeah, no, that's what I'm going to have to do before I come on. I'm going to have to eat something. Hopefully I'll be alright. Yeah. Well, th so far this is the longest live stream. It's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Yeah
put a like up for a video, comment on their videos. If their channel is not for you, that's fine. At least the video you watch, hit a like and leave a comment saying you were there. It's all to help each other grow. And guys, I feel like that song from um, the Lego movie, it's not for everyone is awesome. Everyone is awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. <laughs> he says, I watch you guys, but I am at work, so earbuds are in. Love you guys. <laughs> I love it too. Guys. Much love to each and every Thank one you. of you guys. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. <coughs> but the more people that, that we do in here and everything on our streams, more people that can help you out too, yep. you know, eventually and just like every everybody, you know, grow together and you know Exactly one, and one people, you know. More and more and more. If you go out to do this, make sure you keep it real. Keep it real with you yourselves and stuff. Like they say, paranormal work ain't for everyone, but the ones that do, at least keep it real with you get your, oh. within yourself and your community or your family. Not not only the protection and uh, doing the, um, like the research on it and stuff, but also, uh, if anything happens, Rebel, I don't know if it's in here or not, but if anything happens, don't show fear. No matter right. what you do, because spirits will feed off that. Hey, Huntress of the Unknown! Hey, Huntress, how are you, honey? Thank you for coming in. <coughs> you missed the whole live stream, honey. Um, but basically, it was a recap on the investigation, and uh, as a seven paranormal, right? They they ended up up on us cross somebody over. We're still alive. Yeah, well, I want to steal something. We're gonna steal. Cody, can you grab that bag on the floor? It's shirts. Our cops exploded, and I had to wipe the weapon up or something. Oh, for that, let's have a puppy. Yeah, never show fear. Exactly. But always go into an investigation with an open mind. Yep. But never show fear because that that's a lot a big mistake for a lot of people. Right. They get scared and then the spirits start feeding off that and then more and more stuff happens. Hi. Especially if they're evil energy. God, I got a big belly. Yeah, it's a, okay, Huntress. That's a big mouth, too. <laughs> oh. I got the girl. I got this girl. I got the black hair. Want me a queen pie? Want me a queen pie? Yeah. yeah they... What's a queen pie? <laughs> I My kid's being weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There ain't none. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, King Pong. Is it raining? Go look. I need them to go to the But yes. Uh, you will have a chance to watch the replay and find out what happened on Tuesday night. Probably really cool. It was an awesome live stream. And our big team members look at my, the bottom of my feet. <laughs> Daddy girl, what Come are you here. doing? Sephira. <laughs> yes, we have a pet. <laughs> or one of our team <laughs> members is a dog. Let's think, oh God, she's got a baby. And the baby's looking at her feet. <laughs> Daddy girl, and, well, I guess it's a baby in a way, huh? And. <laughs> She was work looking at my feet. I gotta work on my fear. <laughs> it tends to happen. It does. 
Hey, baby girl. Come here. Safira. She says, no, I want out, man. She doesn't want to make her presence known. Presence of the enemy. Come here. Come here. Look, sorry. This is the uh, this is our fifth team member. This is our baby girl. I get a blue ball. Do I see yourself? They picked up my Rottweiler and threw them out. Oh my god. Yes. But yes, this is my fifth our fifth team member. Yeah, I know, but some parents <laughs> don't like it, you know. She got attacked the other day. Yeah. But I wouldn't I would not go out with without her if I didn't think her safety wasn't going to be harmed. Now when we go to the next one though, she's not going to work. Right. Place. The next one she's gonna stay home with the boys. No, I'm gonna take the Zodiac. Or stay home with the one son. Thank you. Yeah, she wants to go to the Zodiac now. She loves it. She loves the paranormal. Ooh, that was really? haunting. That was pretty haunted there. Smelly but haunted. <laughs> I just quit digging for them. Alright, this, this is a lazy life stream. What the heck? I, I think I'm a little, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Tired, drained. My homegirl for life. Yay! Yeah. I'll go back and watch this. Thank you, Huntress. That'd be cool. Thank you, Huntress. <laughs> Stop! Your nose <laughs> tickling. Your nose tickle. This became a boring life stream. Yeah, the dog's tickling the bottom of my feet with her nose. <laughs> now she's licking him. Poor dog. That's about as bad as your son was smelling she was when he was a baby. Yeah. My kids weren't right in the head. <laughs> but, okay, guys. I am going to go ahead and cut this. We've been on for three hours. So. Oh, three hours. Yeah. Awesome. I, mean, fun. I do have some encouraging words for you guys. The same thing I say at the end of each and every live stream I do. Go out. If you go out, please say your prayers. Take your protection. Have fun with it. Don't show fear. Yeah, don't show fear. <laughs> Just trying to give I'm um, sorry, burn normal circle. <laughs> just trying to give double <coughs> so, Yeah, know. don't show fear. And, and Please. Show, we all have to stick together, so. Please be true to yourself and to your your community or family, whatever whichever you decide to call them. Have fun with it. Be safe. Love and light to everybody. Thank you for coming in. I appreciate it. Drop a like on the way out. If you haven't yet. Thank you. But yes, if it gets too hairy, guys, please. No, I'm going to send the kids on the way. Just pack up and leave. Because the place will always be there for you the next time. And always be respectful. They were once like us. They are still like us, just not as a human form. 
Much love to each and every one of you guys that are here. Much love to Sherry at, for being up in the panel. Love you. Much love to everyone, guys. Love and light. Peace. Nothing is worth you guys going out there getting sick or hurt for a video. With that, guys, being said, you got anything? I said love and light. Let's say it louder. Love and light. Don't show fear, rock or rebel. Daddy have each other's back. Peace.